The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke Chapter 1 Freedom The definition of freedom is the infinite value of the human being. The definition of evil is the destruction of freedom. Everything that is evil teaches people that they have limited value. Simple. Truth is always simple. All people recognize truth because all people are intelligent beings. It is the nature of evil to create artificially complex ideas. It does this to hide or obfuscate the freedom it destroys. If you remove the complexities and fears from your life you will find a plain and beautiful truth. This truth is the nature of your worth. Value of man. To understand freedom is to understand the value of a person. Everything that evil wants is to disguise and destroy your value. All authority is created by evil men to disguise your worth. To understand your own worth is to understand the nature of liberty. Evil The crucial key for understanding our world is to understand the nature of evil. Evil challenges the value of people by denying them the opportunity to make their own choices. By denying them the chance to grow strong in learning and understanding. Freedom While evil seeks to destroy or hide a person's worth, Freedom shows humans their full potential and their full value. With freedom, people have loved, cured disease, removed hunger, eased labor and lived in peace. With freedom, happiness is possible. Freedom is the exact opposite of evil. You Everything written in this book is written to destroy the ideas of culture and law. The lesson of this book is simple, nothing on earth is more valuable than you. Chapter 2 Earth there is a dark conspiracy which has clouded the minds of humanity throughout all ages. This conspiracy is evil incarnate, and controls vast mountains of human emotions, work, thought and the speech. It has been responsible for the deaths of hundreds upon hundreds of millions and the slavery of nearly every being who has ever lived. If you can accept a single principle that you have infinite worth then this book will give you the vision necessary to see the world as it truly is. To know once and for all that this dark conspiracy is not strong, but weak. That evil is not growing, but dying. Principle versus Law To understand how evil controls people, it is necessary to understand the difference between principle and law. A principle is a truth that creates freedom. A law is a lie that creates slavery. Principles describe reality. They are knowledge that help you to make use of your world. Because of your intelligence. You recognize principles in everything you do. Every true thing you learn is a principle. The movements of your hands, which foods taste good, mathematics and empathy for a friend are all based on principles. Laws are artificial ideas created by evil men to restrict the thinking and understanding of people. Laws mask themselves in authority so that they can impersonate principles. When people mistake law for principle their freedom is restricted. When people mistake truth for the ideas of authority, their abilities and their wisdom are diminished. This is the purpose of law. An example of a principle can be found in thermodynamics. A liquid is cooler than a gas. This is a principle. Because this is a principle, it does not restrict us, but enables us. Using this principle, we can condense and expand a substance between gas and liquid to create refrigeration. With this principle, we have more understanding and more power. Principles are truths that create freedom. An example of a law can be found in the culture of royalty. A commoner owes homage to the king. This is a law. Because this is a law, it destroys freedom and enslaves. Under this law, a person must neglect usage of their minds, their speech and their actions. They must believe that they are worth less than the king. Notice that unlike principle, there is no truth in law. It is entirely possible to disrespect the king, and therefore to break the law. Law must be enforced, because there is no truth in it. A law destroys freedom because it is a lie. A principle, however, creates freedom because it is knowledge. That which destroys freedom is evil. Simplicity The world is simpler than it pretends. Complexities are found in every aspect of our cultures, politics and economies. Every day people are introduced to new ideas, new spin, new views or a new symptom of our world. Many of these ideas are perversions of principle designed to engineer specific reactions from people. 
Evil societies invent ideas to destroy the free thinking of people. Some of history's names for these ideas have been socialism, fascism, racism, communism, democracy, class warfare, political correctness, propriety, decency, royalty and terrorism. All of these ideas are created for exactly the same purpose. They are all vehicles to confuse the minds of the victims of slavery. They are all evil. You are capable of understanding everything in the world around you. Your intelligence is not limited. Distortions and complexities are introduced into your understanding so that evil men can control you. Evil wants you to believe that you are incapable of understanding your own world. When you understand the magnitude of your own worth, evil will fail. There are two principles relevant to understanding the concept of intelligence. The first is simplicity. The principle of simplicity states that intelligence recognizes truth. When any truth is presented in pure form, all people are capable of understanding it. There is no truth that you cannot learn. This is the principle of simplicity. That intelligence recognizes truth. The second principle is the principle of obfuscation. Obfuscation is the distortion of principle. Obfuscation is the creation of false ideas in order to hide truth. Sometimes this is simply adding ideas on top of truth to disguise the nature of the original truth. Even ideas that seem entirely appropriate can be used to bury simple truths. Obfuscation is used by evil to confuse the minds of people. Obfuscation distorts principles so that people will be unable to learn. Evil uses obfuscation so that you will be unable to gain wisdom. It does this to limit your freedom. Culture knows that people will discover fewer truths if they are focused on artificial complexities. As children grow, they learn that seemingly complex ideas are actually basic and simple principles. What may have seemed impossible to understand at one point becomes wonderful once understood. It is good to gain wisdom. With wisdom you can do anything. Your search for knowledge will become easier for you as you shed any notion of your own inferiority. Evil uses obfuscation to make people feel inferior. You are not inferior to other people, and you are not inferior to ideas. You have infinite worth. Who you are. As a human being, you are very special. You are unlike the minerals, the plants or the animals of Earth. Nothing commands the abilities of intelligence like you. Nothing else has such complete and total ambition to satisfy dreams. Nothing else has the desire or the thirst for knowledge that you possess. You are a human being. There is no limit to your nature. There is no end to your capacity for understanding or for happiness. As a human being, your life is not subject to any will except your own. You require no permission, favor or license to learn and grow. Anything that you desire can be yours. People naturally seek happiness in their lives, and the most common and deepest desire is for the love and strength of their families. Everything you do enhances security, peace and prosperity for yourself and those you love. Your ability to create these things from the desires of your heart is properly defined as faith. With faith you will find joy in every walk of your life. Faith Faith is the courage to test ideas for truth. With faith, People discover whether ideas are true or false. With faith, people learn principles. People use faith to take steps in testing principles. We often fail, but we always learn. Imagine walking over a rocky surface. Perhaps you expect that the surface is solid and will not shift. If you expected firm ground, but found movement, you may stumble. When the ideas you are testing are wrong, your test will fail. Your intelligence helps you to adjust your thinking to better understand the principles of walking. You learn to control your balance in spite of the difficult terrain. You use faith to test your new understanding, and soon can traverse successfully and quickly. You are mastering principles. Any time human beings put principles into action, they will feel power, excitement and joy. The realization of intelligence is what people seek. Some examples are a little child proudly showing his parents that he has learned to tie his shoes, or a student mastering an understanding of mathematics, or a husband and wife resolving an argument. These are the discovery of principles by the test of faith. The application of faith to principle brings wisdom. Freedom is necessary. The destruction of freedom prevents people from using faith. It prevents people from testing their understanding of principles. When we are not free to take steps, 
We cannot learn and we cannot grow. Love, prosperity and knowledge are all things that are only possible with freedom. Freedom brings everything good. As a human being, the degree of freedom that you require is infinite. Freedom is the infinite value of the human being. If evil destroys freedom in any area of your life, it can limit your wisdom, your love, and your joy. Danger. There are people who would destroy your freedom. They want to control you so that you cannot become the person you want to be. In order to control you, they use force to take away the liberty that you were born with. You must never underestimate the prowess or cruelty of evil people. Evil will confiscate money, destroy virtue and spill blood. Most people are not evil. Most people try to create and not to destroy. However, evil people do exist and they are extremely dangerous. They are called authority. Authority. There is no authority on earth that can rightfully govern your life. Born to this world, you and you alone control your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your hands and your mind. All authority which claims to be able to dispose of you and your abilities is deceit. You were born to this world so that you might have the free agency of life. Life is liberty. With liberty and faith in this world, you can learn and do anything. Anyone who tells you that you must yield your mind, your body, or your possessions to authority is evil. Understand that choices made of your own free will are not evil. There is nothing wrong with sacrifice, if it is made willingly. But sacrifice without choice is not sacrifice, it is slavery. Authority always places demands on people by force. Authority never asks permission. Obscured. The simplest authorities are common thieves. They use extortion or stealth to confiscate things that you value. They can steal money, virtue through rape, or life through murder. By their actions, they are teaching you that your worth is inferior to theirs. The tool of their authority is violence. There are other, far more powerful authorities in your everyday life. They are dramatically more dangerous, more profitable and more subtle. They teach you through distorted ideas that you are not capable or worthy of living free. Authorities teach that other people can manage your life better than you can. With a callous disregard for your worth, you are commanded to behave according to someone else's ideas. The height of the danger can be seen in the extent to which these commands are commonly accepted as good. We know them as culture. You will find such subterfuge everywhere you have value in your life. If something is valuable to you, you can be sure that someone, somewhere, is willing to take it from you. While they bear the same evil as the common thief, the methods of sophisticated culture are normally much, much more powerful. Evil. Evil is the destruction of freedom. It cannot be stated more simply, everywhere you look, you will find the obfuscation of evil. There are countless ideas which are taught about the nature of evil. Every false idea is created by evil to hide truth from you. Evil is not darkness and it is not a frightening unknown. Evil is not some mystical psychology of man, nor is it inherent in our natures. It is not supernatural, and it most definitely exists. As with all principles, the principle of evil is simple. Evil is the destruction of freedom. When free, you can build glory, peace, prosperity and joy into the world. Around you, you will find all these things. Men and women like you built these things. Evil enslaves. Evil is found in words such as force, compulsion, tax, violence, theft, censure, and politics. Notice that in such things, there is no joy. None have any value to humanity. Control. Evil seeks to be a master over you. Evil wants you to be a slave. What we consider as real slavery is indeed only one form of slavery. The African slaves in the United States were compelled to work and toil for other people's benefit. Their lives were mostly controlled for the benefit of the master, but they had some very limited freedoms. Some were able to create distinct traditions and maintain families. They did their best to build joy into their lives despite the tyranny wrought upon them. Because they were in control of portions of their lives, were they free? How much freedom does a person deserve? How much freedom can be destroyed before we recognize that it is evil? Slavery is not a concept of totality. Slavery exists wherever the freedom of man is destroyed. Theft and bullying are slavery. In history, African natives, Jews and many others have experienced lifelong slavery. 
The ultimate slavery is murder. Slavery stops people from being able to make choices for their own lives. Everything that restricts your mind, your movements and your speech is evil. Slavery is found in both the partial and complete destruction of freedom. Evil compels you to behave in manners that do not benefit you or those you love. Culture and law exercise overwhelming force in the name of propriety and public good. They destroy freedom and put human lives under other people's control. Chapter 3 Authority You were born to this world with sovereignty over your mind and over your life. Your abilities to think, to feel, to learn and to love are your liberty. In you, these capacities are infinite. You have infinite worth. Evil seeks to destroy your liberty. It seeks to be an authority over you. It does not want you to have liberty. Evil seeks to destroy you so that it can use you as a puppet. The implementation of evil is called authority. Authorities are what evil implements as it exercises control over the lives of people. Authority limits your ability to learn, to think, to feel, to love and to grow. This is why authority is evil. Authorities are not accidents. They are specifically created by intelligent people to control you. There are two tools that evil makes use of in order to accomplish this. Both tools destroy freedom. They are culture and violence. Each of these tools of authority has weapons which are used to attack your liberty. The weapons of violence are theft, imprisonment, torture, rape and death. The weapons of culture are law and the control of speech. Evil is implemented by force in the lives of people. Evil wants you to obey its authority. It uses the weapons of violence on everyone who will not obey. It uses the weapons of culture to sustain whatever obedience it manages to achieve. Violence your physical body allows you to exercise principles over every aspect of reality. With it, you have the tools necessary to interact with the physical world. Physicality greatly enables you. It is a gift of pure freedom. People obey authority when they are subjected to violence. Violence threatens your physical body. It threatens your interaction with the physical world. People who are subjected to violence are compelled to obey because they want to protect the freedom that their bodies bring to them. Pain and mutilation limit your ability to interact with your world. Death destroys your freedom completely. The lie of tyranny is that you will maintain the freedom of life by obeying authority. The choices it offers you is a lifetime of obedience, or death. Evil is the master of deceit. The objective of evil is not violence, but obedience. The purpose of violence is to compel obedience. Its design is the destruction of freedom. Whether submitting to authority and obeying, or allowing it to destroy you physically, you will have lost your freedom. The only way to maintain freedom is to fight tyranny at all times and at all costs. Perspective The cultures of Earth offer their people different moralities. Perverted definitions of good and evil are found everywhere on the planet. In one culture, a thing is proper. In another it is taboo. In one culture, a word is egregious. In another it is not. Criminal acts are defined entirely differently in opposing cultures. When an authority is established amongst people, evil is either obvious to see, or nearly impossible to see, depending entirely upon whether or not you are a part of its culture. Even though few people are able to recognize the oppression found in their own cultures, culture is still oppression. Most people question in horror how an average German soldier could himself participate in the murder of Jews. Most people question in horror how millions of average people under the umbrella of communism could bring their brothers certain death at the hands of police. The examples in history are more than plentiful. They exist in every culture ever designed. Culture maintains a death grip upon the nature of man. It is not true that history's villains misused authority. The truth is that they followed the object and design of authority perfectly. Tyranny is always disguised as culture and law. Authority Principle The authority principle describes the behavior of people who live under the rule of law. The authority principle shows that people obey anything and anyone that they believe is an authority. Though the who, the why and the what have changed in history, the behavior of people is the same. They obey. When people are taught that obedience is principle, they obey. When they are taught that the source of worth and knowledge is found in another person, rather than in themselves, they obey. This is the rule of law, and it teaches people that their will is subjective to the will of law and those who control the law. 
Examples of authorities are governments, bullies, mafias, thieves and kings. People obey authority in their lives either out of fear of violence, or because culture conditions them to accept obedience as proper and good. Authorities always use both tools. The most successful authorities do not have to use violence as often because of the strength of their cultures. Both culture and violence enforce authority. Under authority, people have obeyed law to the atrocities of history. The murders, raping and looting under chieftains, kings, emperors, communism and Nazis were not perpetuated by small groups of men. They were performed by thousands and even millions of peoples. These people would not have committed such egregious evils on their own. If a random person had commanded them, they would have refused. So why, at the behest of a perceived authority, do they obey? Obedience to authority is the authority principle. People will obey authority no matter what is asked of them. They obey because they have been lied to. They have been falsely taught that principle is found in law, in history. It is difficult to imagine why some cultures are so much more violently depraved than others. Authority is the reason. Cultures with the least influential authority are the most peaceful, and by definition, the most free. Cultures with the most influential authorities are the most violent, and by definition, slaves. Any time you are compelled to act in obedience to authority, you are being influenced by this principle. Evil uses the authority principle to condition people to obey without questioning what, why or whom they are obeying. Destroying your identity to gain power over you is the modus operandi of evil. Pattern of Tyranny Tyranny is disguised as culture and law. Everything that evil seeks is the destruction of freedom to destroy the value of people. The pattern of tyranny is simple. The object is to enslave the minds of a people by creating a culture of obedience. To gain the obedience of people, there is a process that must be taken. This process is the pattern of tyranny. War Before an authority can be established, war must take place. War is the implementation of violence. It is the tool that evil uses to establish authority. All of history's wars have occurred because of a desire to implement a new authority over a people. On the smallest scale, this occurs via a process of threat and acquiescence such as the behavior of bullies, thugs, and mafias. On the largest scale, it occurs in violent multi-year battles, such as the behavior of nations and empires. Enemies In order to offer people an escape from violence, new authorities teach people that obedience will end war. The design of authority is obedience. Authorities condition people to obedience by promising to protect them from dangerous enemies. Theocracies have used the enemy of blasphemy. The Nazis used the Jews. Communists used the rich. Many, many enemies have been created. But by far the most common is anarchy. Protection. In order to engineer a culture and pervert the free thinking of men, evil must create an enemy. It is not important to tyrants who the enemy is. Tyrants offer protection from these enemies in exchange for obedience. Take careful note that they offer protection but obedience is mandatory. Whether or not you wish to have the authority over you, you will obey or they will revert to violence. The enemies are only created to ease the burden of obedience from the minds of people. Cultural enemies are an illusion. Benjamin Franklin taught that those who give up liberty to gain security will soon have neither. This is not an idle observation. The pattern of tyranny clearly shows that the entire purpose of presenting you with the need for security is to convince you to yield your liberty. That is everything authority wants. The demand for security is raised by those who seek power over you. This is how they create enemies. Make no mistake, it isn't the enemy that tyrants are after. They are after you. The illusion of cultural enemies is designed to restrict the thinking of people. It is designed to convince people that the real enemy is not the evil that rules over them, but some imaginary demon that would do them harm. This is the lie of tyranny. It requires your obedience in order to save you. Tyranny is disguised as culture and law. Social proof. As people begin to submit under the duress of violence to the will of a new authority, a principle known as social proof enters culture. The more people that obey the new authority, the more likely it is that others will follow. The normalcy of obedience becomes a part of everyday life. It is natural to want to escape the violence of authority. 
People who live under the oppression of nations or thugs will inevitably accept the offer of obedience. A mugger will offer not to shoot if her wallet is surrendered, rapists offer not to kill if virtue is surrendered, mafias offer not to torture if payment is made, governments offer not to obliterate life if laws are obeyed. The offer is sweetened with the illusion of enemies. When a person faces certain pain or death on one hand, or protection from an enemy on the other, the will to remain free will eventually break down. Law Laws are decreed and written to legitimize obedience. Law impersonates principle. People are taught that what is law is right. They are not taught to do what is right, but to obey what is law. The legitimacy of law is the object of culture. Culture uses law to distort the minds of people into believing that they are incapable of seeking truth or living in peace. It teaches that law is legitimate, instead of one's own mind. Control of speech The most fundamental weapon of culture is the control of speech. While history has shown violent examples of this weapon, it exists in every culture as the code of propriety. The objective of the control of speech is making sure that those who are compelled to bend to the will of authority never gain the courage to look back. In order to maintain obedience, culture demands that everyone it enslaves enforce its will upon those around them. It teaches people to call their recalcitrant neighbors weird or insane. It demands that every person turn on those who fail to obey the precepts of culture. Culture condemns as immoral and antisocial all those who fail to obey its precepts. In this way, culture shapes people's minds by restricting their speech. Further, culture endows its evangelists with adjectives such as noble and upstanding. Those who most closely follow the rules of culture, especially in condemning enemies, are rewarded for inflicting stigma upon those less willing to obey. It is this devaluation of the human spirit that proves the evil of cultural norms. Those who exhibit recalcitrance or suggest rebellion against authority are ostracized, berated and demonized. It is hard to endure the loneliness associated with fitting outside of popular culture. This is how the control of speech is a weapon designed to break the spirit of man. It is a weapon designed to compel you to obedience. Once the people under a culture begin to enforce the control of speech upon each other, authority has been established. It now rules the very people who enforce its power. This is the design of culture, and authority can now do with you as it pleases. Enforcement There are times when authority must revert to violence in order to maintain obedience. There will always be a small minority who refuse to obey the tenets of cultural law. Because of this, authorities employ a constant stream of violence known as law enforcement, or police. These are not police in the defense of liberty, but police in the defense of authority. Cultures always teach that liberty and authority are one and the same. But the design of police is to wield the weapons of violence in the preservation of authority, not to defend liberty. Authority must also employ violence when cultures break down throughout history. People have slowly and steadily learned more and more about their own worth, and hence demanded more and more freedom. Different cultures have fallen as people realize that culture is a lie. When cultures begin to break down, it is because people are learning about their value. Such cultures and the authorities they protect are doomed. Never once in history has a culture in decline been redeemed. When authorities see that their culture is being dismantled, and obedience is no longer theirs to enjoy, they return to violence. These returns to violence are historically extremely brutal. The violent enforcement of law is a sign of coming liberty. Example Take a look at a generic historical example of the pattern of tyranny. A rouge thug gathers together a band of men to extort money from the people nearby where he lives. In his success, he plunders massive amounts of money and grows his gang into an army. He successfully kills the previous officers of law and enforcement, or subverts them through stealth. Knowing that he can plunder more value in the long term if he leaves his victims alive, he implements attacks upon everyone in his range of influence. He draws borders, he gives decrees. Importantly, he promises his victims that he will protect them from all other thugs. His victims slowly become accustomed to his will, and his lies. The people become afraid if they hear their neighbors talk of escaping the taxes and cruelty. Soon they actively support the regime by targeting all treasonous speech, and turning in deviance to police. Originally called criminal, 
the thug is now called authority, he is called law and order. This example could have easily described any gang of barbarians from the Middle Ages, or from ancient history. It could apply to any king or emperor of years past. It could have described any warlord of today, or any mafia. In fact, it closely resembles every authority that has ever been established. Once people are conditioned to accept the notion of authority, they normally obey without thinking. The object of law is obedience, and the destruction of freedom is found in the blindness of this obedience. The authority principle shows that even when a person would normally believe an action to be wrong, if ordered by an authority, they will still perform it. The establishment and exercise of authority over a people is called the pattern of tyranny. In history. It is easy to follow this pattern through history. Adolf Hitler created an enemy in the Jews. Early on, German culture was manipulated, and Jews were condemned as dirty and greedy, a people odd because they keep to their own kind. Soon the culture was in place where people were chastised for defending Jews. People who demonized them were championed. Speech was then controlled. Next Adolf Hitler made Jews into the full-fledged enemy. The Jews became responsible for all social and economic ills. The solution was to put Adolf Hitler in power, to yield German liberties to him so that he could save them from the enemy. Make no mistake, Hitler was not after the Jews, he was after the Germans. An evil man, he was simply willing to sacrifice millions of Jews to obtain power. Do not make the mistake of thinking Hitler was a racist. Follow the pattern. In short order he ruled the entire nation and forced all Germans to serve him and his army. His true ambition was not racism, but total world domination. Socialism and communism create the enemy of greed in the same pattern by controlling speech. Profit becomes a dirty word, even though it only means that you have labored to create a better life. Money becomes evil, even though it simply represents your work, which is obviously moral. They create the enemy but it is not greed they are after, it is you. If they can convince you that your money and your labors are the enemy, then you will yield those labors and your money to them. Authority is not designed to destroy the enemy. It is designed to enslave you. Democracies create the enemy of anarchy in the same pattern by controlling speech. It becomes immoral to suggest that one could break the law. It does not matter which law, or what it says. Nobility is placed on the payment of taxes no matter how much they demand of you. It is the highest form of cultural propriety to obey the law, regardless of what it says. The enemy is the fictional anarchy, wherein no individual is safe, because everyone is a tyrant. In order to save you from anarchy, you yield authority to the law. You obey. Evil is not after the destruction of anarchy, it is after you. If you can see the tyranny in a culture that demands that you obey, no matter what is asked of you and no matter who writes the laws, then you are beginning to understand the nature of evil. Everything that is evil teaches you that you have limited worth. Rule of Law The rule of law is the single most dangerous idea ever inflicted upon mankind. It has gone by countless names throughout the ages of history. In more basic tribes it is known as respect for elders, in the tyranny of royalty, it is known as nobility, birthright and divinity, in communism it is known as the supremacy of state, in dictatorships it is known as the antidote to anarchy, in theocracies it is known as revelation. The net teaching of this idea is that you are to obey the law, not because of its merits or its morality. You are to obey only because it is the law. It is assumed that even if the law is wrong, then it is right to follow because it supports the system, and the system is more important than you. In order for an intelligent person to choose what is right, they must know who is asking obedience of them, they must consider why it is being asked, and what it is they are being asked to do. Only then can they decide for themselves if it is right. This is not what authority wants. Authority is not concerned with you doing what is right, it is only concerned with obedience. Culture teaches that the nature of the law and what it asks you to do are irrelevant. Culture teaches that obedience is propriety. Culture teaches that when law is created it becomes morality. Law is a weapon. It is used by evil to attack its prey. Whether in the name of duty to king, loyalty to state, or rule of law, law is the weapon used to extort and control. Culture upholds the nobility of law. Culture teaches that law is proper and good, 
It never questions who wrote the law. Tyrant and brother are the same. Culture never questions whether or not the law is right. You are to obey no matter what it says. In this fashion, law is a powerful weapon to be used against you. All principalities create volumes of laws that take lifetimes to understand and armies of lawyers to manipulate. All of these things are weapons in the hands of the powerful, which they will use at your expense. Law holds value only to those who create it, and only because your culture demands that you obey it. The purest invitation to tyranny is your commitment to obey law regardless of what it says. Against you, the law becomes the perfect weapon. Whomever controls the law, controls you. Your worth is measured by the extent of your obedience. Chapter 4. Culture Cultures are created to protect power structures. Culture is the enforcer of authority. Culture distorts principles in order to defend the authority of evil. Culture must convince you that it is not wrong when law subjugates your worth and destroys your freedom. Culture convinces people of this by perverting the concept of morality. Morality is liberty. Immorality is evil. The exercise and defense of freedom are moral. The destruction of freedom is immoral. This is the pure truth of morality. Prudence is the proper application of principle. Imprudence is foolishness. Prudence is not morality. It is not immoral to kick a heavy stone with your bare foot, but it would probably be foolish. Prudence is a question of applying the principles and wisdom you have gathered in your life to achieve the goals you have for yourself. This is made possible by liberty. Without liberty, prudence is meaningless. Morality must come before prudence. The great lie of culture is that authority is not bound by morality, and that authority can enforce its own prudence upon you. The great lie of culture is that you are worth less than law. Cultures teach that intentions of prudence can be enforced by law. In this fashion they gain excuse to control the lives of people. In order for people to learn, grow, and find happiness, people must be free to test their understanding of principles. With freedom, they can do this by a process of faith trial and error. In this fashion children grow from immaturity to maturity. In this fashion human beings gain wisdom. Cultures are agents of evil. The objective of evil is the damnation of your ability to grow strong in wisdom. The objective of evil is the destruction of your worth. In order to gain control over you, culture spreads the lie that authority is not bound by morality. It teaches that authority can destroy freedom at will and claims prudence as the reason you should willingly submit. In the name of defending you, culture claims that the destruction of freedom is morality. Cultures pretend that evil is good and that good is evil. Prudence can be found all around you. It is found in the choices you make every day. Even when a mistake is made, you learn prudence. Prudence cannot be enforced. To enforce prudence is law. Law is lie. Without the freedom to choose, you cannot learn prudence. You cannot be happy. Morality can be found all around you. Wherever you find it, you will find joy. Wherever you find immorality, you will find misery. Culture enforces authority by destroying freedom with law. This is immorality. Control of speech. Speech is controlled by culture because speech advances wisdom. Human communication accelerates growth and learning on an exponential scale. People learn principles on their own through experimentation with their environment, but they learn far quicker when they are able to communicate their thoughts through speech. Speech is the single most powerful tool of humanity. Through it, children and adults alike accelerate knowledge in anything they desire to learn. Culture cannot afford the rapid spread of human understanding. Should people learn their own worth and potential, they would never submit to the artificial authorities placed over them. Culture is about control. Cultures are designed to protect the powerful, to protect those in authority. Its job is to make sure that speech cannot flow freely. To accomplish this, it establishes a pattern of subversion of thought and propriety of speech. Authority is unquestionable. Culture first labels the questioning of authority as immoral, the rule of law, absolute respect for law enforcement, character and politics and the nobility of king are all examples of cultural subversion of thought. Culture cannot allow people to question their allegiance to a specific law, or a specific king, or a specific system of authority. Instead it teaches that these things are above question. It is never permitted to question the king, dictator, or democracy. In every culture ever devised, authority is supreme over humanity. 
the highest extreme of questioning authority is discussing the assassination of authorities. Even to print a line of text such as this will bring shivers to those who live under any culture. This is the grip that culture has upon speech. Questioning whether authority is right or wrong is not allowed. The system is above you, you will not fight back. Though law considers itself moral for defending itself with violence, it will teach you that you are immoral for even thinking about defending yourself against it. Lesser taboos on questioning authority exist in varying form in the cultures of history. In modern times this is most obvious in the shame brought upon anyone who questions the respectability of police, public education teachers or other public employees. Their work is considered to be above the work of everyone else. Their actions and their jobs are beyond reproach because they are agents of authority. It is sometimes called respect for the office or position. Questioning their right to interfere with your life will bring you the scorn of culture. This is the control of speech. Further examples exist in the belief that paying taxes is noble. Not one person would pay them if they didn't have to. Not one person pays a dollar more than is demanded of them under threat of imprisonment. And yet throughout culture you hear people speak of the nobility of paying taxes. Taxpayer is the title given by those seeking legitimacy in political arguments. Culture teaches that good people are those who allow themselves to be extorted and controlled without thinking. Obedience to arbitrary law under the rule of law is labeled character. The more destructive a law is to humanity, the more praise of nobility culture will give to them who obey it. If authority is not questioned, if it is accepted as the proper ruler over man, slavery is the result. Germans fail to question the culture imposed upon them by the National Socialist Party. Their servitude to Adolf Hitler and his war machine were the result. Billions fail to question the culture of brotherhood championed by communism. Totalitarian slavery and the deaths of a hundred million people was the result. Large or small, when you yield your mind to culture, it will make a tool of you for its own purpose. It begins when you limit your speech out of fear of culture. Diversion of Propriety The next step in the cultural manipulation of speech is the creation of propriety and politeness. These define the artificial enemies of society that culture would have you focus on instead of authority. They are designed arbitrarily to divert attention from the evil of authority. What would the world be like if you were free to open your mouth? The minds of people are tethered under ideas called cultural propriety, political correctness and politeness. Political correctness is engineered slavery. It focuses attention on controlling the speech of people in such a way that they believe the enemy of people is impoliteness. They are taught to believe that they are naturally racist, sexist and bigots. Only when culture keeps a tight control on speech are people safe from their own demons. Culture teaches the limited value of people. Coarseness of language is the shameful speaking of words or concepts outside the propriety of culture. While there is nothing evil in a word, and languages are reinvented and molded every day, culture would have us believe that the words we use are where evil lives, instead of the crushing of the human spirit employed by authority. A curse is a wish of harm upon a person. Swearing is an oath of action, yet both of these things have been perverted so as to teach you that speech is what is evil, and not the destruction of freedom that evil people employ. Every time you find an element of speech that is culturally unacceptable to speak, you will find a scapegoat. The specific instance is irrelevant. Culture always creates propriety to hide tyranny. In the beginning of the National Socialist Movement of Germany, culture was engineered to make defending a Jew unseemly. It likewise made it impolite to challenge those who condemn Jews. This pattern is found in every culture ever created. Nazi culture was not after the control of the Jews, it was after control of the Germans. Choice In order to free yourself from the slavery of speech control, you must understand the principle of personal offense. If you are offended by a word or a sentence, then you have chosen anger and hurt for yourself. Culture would have you believe that it has been forced upon you, but this is not true. Culture would have you believe that evil is found in the discussion of ideas, or the passing of intentional or unintentional insults. It would have you believe that certain words, or allusions are where evil is to be found within society. If evil can create the enemy of speech, it can convince you to yield to its control. This is the design and purpose of culture.
Though people always feel entirely justified in taking offense at speech, it is nonetheless their full choice. They have the freedom to feel anything they want when they hear the mind of another person. Yet the solution offered by culture is to force speech into a manner conducive to culture's taste. Once you believe that the control of speech is noble, you will not wonder at why it is improper to question authority. Crushing the human spirit While arbitrary culture is found amongst adults everywhere on earth, it is most easily viewed amongst children. Culture creates ideas of style compulsion, body image compulsion and action compulsion. To prefer pink over blue is a personal preference. To wear blue because you fear wearing pink is the destruction brought by arbitrary culture. Cultures limit the choices available to people by creating arbitrary rules for your life and enforcing them with peer pressure. Crushing the spirit of people allows culture to gain their obedience. When people fear standing tall because they believe they are not sufficiently attractive, wealthy or educated, culture is crushing their spirit by teaching them that they have limited worth. People who do not know their own value are easy to control. The pressures applied amongst children are a paradigm of the culture of more powerful evil. Those children who are the most adept at understanding how to conform to cultural norms and apply the strictest enforcement against everyone else are the ones who've gained social power. This is a type and a shadow of the culture of nations and kings. A model citizen of culture is one who patterns themselves precisely to the ideals of culture. In premise, this means style, speech, education and economics. In reality, this means obedience. Culture teaches people to idolize the perfect citizen. It does so because it desires your obedience as well. These people are rewarded by a society for being easily molded by culture. The powers of authority and compulsion in all walks of life will always reward the model citizens with tokens of nobility and will always punish those who fail to meet the standards of servitude with humiliation and ridicule, such as the creation of a culture, such as the making of slaves. This breakdown of the human spirit eventually forces everyone to conform. Very few will even think of fighting the power structure, almost everyone accepts authority. Arrogance versus Conceit Culture teaches that arrogance is an unwarranted valuation of self. You are a being of unlimited value. Culture is lying to you. Arrogance is condemned by culture because culture does not want people to understand how much they are worth. It purposely confounds the meanings of arrogance and conceit. Conceit is believing that you are more valuable than others. All people have infinite value. To be conceited is to degrade the value of those around you. Authority is the ultimate conceit. It lays people low lest they believe that it is they, and not law which has value. Arrogance is an understanding of your own worth. Culture condemns it in order to suggest that you are really not of sufficient value to do, say, or accomplish things that you desire. Arrogance offends others because they have been taught by culture their entire lives that they have little or no value. They are hurt by the misunderstanding that arrogant people are better than they are. They are taught that arrogance is conceit. If people were not so easily swayed by the doctrines of culture, they would recognize that all people have equal value. When they see the arrogance of a person who has faith in themselves above that of their own, they would rejoice. If an arrogant person has great value, then so do they. Culture condemns arrogance in order to crush the spirit of faith. Without culture, people would allow themselves to revel in the inspiration that arrogant people provide. The arrogance to believe that we can fly, cure disease and accomplish wonders. The arrogance to suggest that you can govern yourself. Enthusiasm and excitement. Enthusiasm for life is frequently ridiculed by culture. Those who are excited by the wonder and beauty of our world are in danger of understanding how much they are worth. This is not something that culture can allow. Excitement and enthusiasm are allowed only in limited and predefined forms. Every culture is different, but they all provide acceptable directions and outlets for excitement. These outlets divert the arrogant expression of enthusiasm so that others will not be inspired. Culture dismisses achievement as impossible for the average person. It teaches that most people can expect only limited success in their life. It teaches people to accept that dreams are unreachable. Without exception, the reason that dreams are so hard to reach is because of culture, laws, control and the crushing of the human spirit limit our ability to achieve. Only human. 
Culture has many variations of the phrase only human in every language. The phrase implies the ultimately limited value of people. The phrase is a lie. People have an unlimited capacity for intelligence. Things in the realm of the supernatural in ancient times are commonplace today. Principles that are amazingly complex become simple to intelligent beings as they are understood. With freedom, the more you grow in learning, the more wisdom opens your mind to the purity of our reality. Cultures frequently teach that intelligence is hereditary, in conjunction with the notion that the powerful are more intelligent. This teaching is designed to imply that those in authority rightfully belong there. It is designed to teach that the intelligence of people is limited by the physical construction of their brains. Those not in authority are obviously not qualified to rule themselves. Culture needs people to accept limitation in order to swallow obedience. Glorification of historic evils. Contemporary culture has a tendency to romanticize the evils of history. Genocidal warlords such as Alexander are given the title great. Royal masters are bestowed with the honor of having been a good king. Communism slavery is venerated under the pretense that Joseph Stalin was the reason the system failed. The murders of law enforcement are painted white under the banner of defending the rule of law. Bloodbaths are idealized in the loyalty of armies. Culture would have us ignore the nature of history. It would have us believe that they are fantasies and stories, instead of the struggle of humanity against evil. Billions have lost their lives struggling against tyranny. The lesson of history is not the honor of slaves, or the good of a system or the nobility of a king. It is the nature of evil that we must learn. Do not let culture cloud your knowledge of history by glorifying tyranny. This clouding of tyranny is found in every culture on earth today, and obscures the same tyranny found in the past. Those who facilitated tyranny served as the enablers of authority. I am just doing my job. Culture will not question what the job was. Culture will not allow you to believe that people have any responsibility to disobey the evil of authority. Nazis, communists and warlords alike. Culture teaches us that the average butcher of history was just doing his job. Culture glorifies the evils of history and teaches that today's blind obedience to authority is nobility. The same blinding of the mind used by the cultures of the past is used by culture today. How correct law pretends itself to be is irrelevant. In order to enforce authority you must destroy liberty. Obedience Obedience to authority is the only objective of culture. It has a thousand facets and a million lies, but its design is always obedience. Chivalry was the code of honor created by royalty in the Middle Ages. This honor consisted of blind adoration of knights and noblemen. Peasants and serfs were taught that those who ruled over them and enforced the law of the king were always respectable and moral. The objective was the obedience of human beings to authority. The teaching of chivalry was that the knights of law enforcement had more value than everyone else. Patriotism is the code of honor created by nations in modern times. This honor consists of total allegiance to whomever controls the nation at the moment. Patriotism offers no choice. You cannot choose which nation to support. You are a slave by birth. You cannot refuse obedience. Allah has total claim to you. Patriotism teaches that the nation is glorious and strong, and that people have value only in as much as they bow to it. The rule of law is the code of honor created by democracy. It teaches that honor is found in obedience to the law. This code teaches that you cannot examine what the law says, or who wrote it or why. The rule of law demands total obedience. Law is a weapon, and obedience is its design. The rule of law equates criminality with morality. The rule of law teaches that law has more value than people. All cultures call disobedience treason and scare people with ideas of treachery against what is right and proper. Treason is the premise that it is wrong to disobey the interests of authority. The truth is that it is wrong to compel others to action against their will. Since authority is always a creature of force, the claims of law are immoral and irrelevant. There is no such thing as treason. Slaves as enforcers Those who are under the limitation of culture will enforce culture's doctrines upon others. Culture teaches that morality is found in obedience, and so those who believe that authority is rightfully exercised over people will demand that their friends and neighbors behave according to culture's will. This is the treachery of culture. It convinces people that slavery is morality. 
it desires only obedience, and people return it in droves. It convinces people that the destruction of freedom is morality. It pretends that evil is good, and that good is evil. All who would speak against authority in the defense of freedom are condemned. At its strongest form, culture is able to convince its people to become soldiers and murder, plunder and conquer new peoples. It has happened in every empire. It has happened in every kingdom and nation, from Nazi warlords to barbarian hordes, and from lynch mobs to law enforcement. Authority is expanded and retained by violence. Those who participate in furthering the goals of evil are given the titles of bravery and honor by culture. Symbols of authority. Culture seeks to enforce authority by impressing upon the minds of people that they are inferior to law. When people believe that they are worth less than law, they will believe that it is their rightful place to obey. The symbols that authority uses to create the illusion that people have limited worth are very similar throughout history. The robes of modern judges compare to the robes of royalty. The wigs of late European politics compare to the crowns of royalty. The uniforms of law enforcement and the armor of knights, captain, general, senator, magistrate, sheriff, prince, lord, titles, clothing and badges have been used in every culture in history to create the illusion of authority. Culture focuses the mind on symbols such as honor, loyalty, devotion and duty. Such symbols are not new. It is easy for most people to recognize the foolishness of loyalty to king, dictator or communism. However, People still fall to modern symbols such as law, democracy and patriotism. If the objective of a symbol is obedience, it is evil. Police officers carry badges to show that they are duly authorized enforcers of the law. They enforce the law upon you, but you did not authorize them. This is the illusion of authority. Culture hides tyranny behind the trappings of meaningless symbolism. It would have you believe that law is authorized to reign over you however it pleases. It hides the fact that only you can give that permission. Instead, it presumes permission by birthright, or by the geometry of your location relative to its borders. It is an illusion. Should law truly be the authorized agent of defense or production, it would have to receive the permission of every single person it claims to represent. It would have to allow every person to extricate themselves from that authority if law failed to meet its obligation. Law never seeks permission and never will. It does not represent you, it represents evil. Money and greed. Money is good. Culture has invented the lies of money's evil so that authority can more easily lay claim to it. Authority can take your ambition for improving your life by demonizing your labors. Culture teaches people that desiring greater comforts is selfish and greedy. It teaches that money is a mysterious evil. The more money is condemned, the easier it is to steal from you. Greed does not exist amongst free people. Greed is not the love of money. The love of money is only the love of a better life. Greed is the theft of money, and it exists only among tyrants. There is no end to the amount of improvement you can have in your life. There is no limit to humanity's ability to cure disease, to end hunger and to enjoy life. Culture would have you believe that you are limited. Culture teaches that you are not worthy of achieving your dreams. There is no greed in desiring more, there is only greed in stealing the labors of another. Theft is evil, it is the nature of authority to steal. Only tyrants possess greed. When culture teaches that working for money is greed, it also teaches that labor without money is noble. Laboring by rule of law for the collective we, is taught as the proper form of ambition. If you cannot choose to give or to keep, then you are not we. You are a slave. Suit of Law Law is a weapon. Authority establishes itself as the only means of defense. Because of this, people have no recourse against the law. Law is designed to enslave all who obey it. There are many people who are able to use the law to extort. Lawyers and thieves regularly band together in democracies to loot the valuables of people. It is commonplace to fear behaviors and speech because they will be used as a pretense for extortion. The idea of law that licenses extortion is liability. This idea teaches that one man is responsible for the failures of another. It is commonly accepted as a noble principle of justice. It is not justice, it is a lie. Liability is not a principle. Principles need no enforcement. The reason liability laws are enforced is to extract massive sums of money from anybody who happens to be able to pay. 
Liability teaches that you have a responsibility under law to prevent the failures of others if you have more money than they do. In a free world, people's actions are their own, and their failures bring consequences. Those consequences of principle are necessary to the growth and understanding of humanity. Law twists the consequences and assigns liability by fiat. Law confounds our understanding of true principles with obfuscation. This is done to enslave and extort. Collectivism Culture teaches the worthiness of the common good employed by force. It teaches that it is acceptable to issue law to advance a collective ideal. Whether to pay for a project, or control behavior, compulsion is frequently labeled public interest. If these things are truly for the benefit of people, why must they be forced in order to accomplish them? Remember the difference between principle and law. Principle requires no enforcement. No law is required in order for people to feed and shelter themselves. If something must be done by force in order to accomplish it, then it is not a good thing, it is only something that authority wants. All government, all violence, and all laws are methods of forcing you to yield money or motive without your permission. If these were things that truly provided benefit to you, then you would do them willingly. In a free market, you get only that which you pay for. In government, you can easily get anything you want at the expense of others. Those who have the most to take are the easiest to rob. Culture uses ideas such as the working class and the rich. These ideas have no meaning, since all classes work, and even the poor of today are rich compared to the rest of history. These ideas are just tools of cultural manipulation. If culture can create social classes and convince you that they are at war, then it can hide its own tyranny. Culture creates collectivism with individual crushing labels such as we and our. People are taught that within a nation, they are our children, rather than the parents. Culture teaches that we want laws and taxation, and that we fight wars. The destruction of the individual in collectivism directly serves the purpose of evil. Collectivism teaches that good things can come from compulsion. It teaches that people can be forced to accomplish things for their own good. It pirates the love people have for their neighbors and twists it into authority's demands. Slavery is the result. If an individual will not choose a thing, then it is not good for him. Force crushes the human spirit. Choice enables life. Morality and Values Evil is not found in the stupidity of man. Evil is found in the slavery of man. Law impersonates morality. Culture teaches the ultimate infallibility of law in order to compel obedience. Even when law is wrong, culture teaches that the moral thing to do is to obey. Law presumes to enforce prudence on people by calling it morality. This is the ultimate deceit. Morality is freedom. Law destroys freedom and calls it morality. Freedom is the cure for imprudence. All the social ills that law presumes to correct exist because people are not free to learn and grow. With limited ability for growth, principles are confused and foolish behavior is the frequent result. Freedom brings wisdom, peace and prosperity. The history of freedom shows this clearly. Force and compulsion destroy the value of human beings and dissolve the will of their spirit. Evil steals the sovereignty you have over your own life. Nothing righteous can come from the destruction of freedom. Sanity Culture teaches that only nuts and crazies challenge authority. Law is the holiest and most sacred emblem of culture. Insanity is not an inability to perceive reality. It is a willing rejection of reality in favor of the artificial constructs of tyranny. Law threatens violence upon all who refuse to obey it. When you chose to act upon an artificial view of reality, you are insane. People obey law out of fear of death, until they can be properly cultured to accept the rule of law without question. Cultural indoctrination is insanity. The definition of insanity is blind obedience. It is insane to believe that those in power over people rightfully belong there. It is insane to assume that they will always be there. It is insane to believe that law has the right to command the obedience of people. The culture of royalty, the culture of patriotism and the culture of law are all insanity. No human being who understands the fullness of their own worth would ever accept the notion that someone ought to rule over them. It is the function of culture to blind the eyes of people to their own worth and to deafen their ears to any speech that may teach them. When cultural influence is at its peak, insanity ravages the mind. Obedience is the object of authority, and authority wants no possibility of rebellion.
The definition of insanity is blind obedience. Defense of freedom. Culture teaches that only police have the right to defend. It teaches that only authority has the right to decide if you are worthy of defense and what level of defense it will provide. While it teaches that it is never acceptable for you to defend yourself, culture teaches that when the law implements kidnapping and murder to enforce its authority, it is always acceptable. In order to remove all thought of people fighting their masters, culture teaches that revolt is never acceptable. Rebellion without violence is almost always impossible. Culture ensures that authority holds a monopoly on violence, and it has no compunction about kidnapping, imprisonment and murder. The only way to escape authority is to destroy all tyranny. This is the reason massive wars have been necessary to destroy entrenched tyrants such as Adolf Hitler. Culture controls speech to stop authority from being questioned. It creates ideas of propriety to hide its own tyranny. The only remaining element is to make sure that if someone does discover their own worth, that they cannot extricate authority from their lives. This is done by making the defense of freedom immoral. The price of freedom is blood. The reason for this is simple. Evil does not care if you live or die. It will kill you before it yields control over your life to you. Hundreds of millions have died in history's wars proving this principle. Every instance of a thug maiming, raping or killing an innocent person proves this principle. While the vast majority of people are not evil, there are powerful tyrants who will never yield. They are men who will scorch the earth in order to gain or maintain authority. The only way to end tyranny is to destroy every tyrant. The more that tyrants are allowed to work the devices of culture upon people, the harder tyranny is to extricate and the more lives it will cost to do so. This is the reason that culture teaches that the only proper way for you to defend yourself against law is to obey the law. The teaching preserves tyranny. 100 million people have died at the hands of communists because so few were willing to ignore the law and instead do what was right. Europe was nearly obliterated because so many people valued the law more than liberty. They failed to stop Adolf Hitler while he was still weak. Removing the true nature of violence from news and relegating its understanding to the artificial violence of entertainment teaches people that there is safety in slavery. News reports enable authority when the true cost of tyranny is removed from view. Culture hides the plainest images of blood from people in order to keep them passive. In reality, evil will stop at nothing to control you, including destroying everything you have and everyone you love. Violence is used in the preservation of tyranny every day. Violence and murder are only weapons of immorality when used to destroy freedom. The defense of freedom is never immoral. Any man who will wield the weapons of violence against innocent people in order to gain authority must be destroyed. Chapter 5. Tactics. There is no such thing as anarchy, there is only tyranny. All cultures teach the nobility of authority. All pretend to defend the security of people against enemies who would do harm. The common thread amongst every authority in history is the universal enemy of anarchy. While cultures have added racism, economy, terrorism, nationalism, and countless other enemies to the mix, anarchy exists as the enemy of every culture. There is no such thing as anarchy. You will not kill your neighbor in the absence of police. You are not evil. Those who wish this type of control and violence over others teach you that you are not worthy of ruling yourself. They teach that you lack intelligence, self-control and value. They teach that only government can rule you. The word government means tyranny. It exists to establish ownership of you. You need no governing. You are a human being and as such have infinite worth. You and you alone rightfully control your actions, your speech and your labor. All who seek these things of you must receive your permission first. All who do not, are evil. Anarchy is a lie. It is created by tyrants to deceive you. There is no such thing as anarchy. There is only tyranny. Royalty From the earliest days of man, there have been those who looked around them and saw others as tools to be used. Instead of building themselves up in wisdom and understanding where infinite prosperity is possible, they designed on the laziness of theft and control. In primitive form, these are men who would use superior physical strength and the threat of violence to cower people. The demands they made were simple, money. The stronger men could live off the work of others. The success of such men is measured in modern culture's terms for them. Some are thugs and brutes, 
others barbarians and bandits. Because of their limited success and unending brutality, such evil rarely held people in bondage for long. Revolts and power struggles were common. It was extremely difficult for a person to maintain his grip of extortion over a people. As history progressed, men of significantly more cunning devised the element of control necessary to stabilize power over people. This element is culture. Instead of extortion and brutality, they created the notions of rightful rule and royalty. Their objective was to preclude the people from revolt by teaching them that their authority was legitimate. This is the singular objective of all culture. For thousands of years the culture of royalty enslaved all of humanity under the names chief, king and emperor. All titles of nobility were designed to reinforce the image of familial loyalty. People who are naturally respectful and deferent towards their families were taught that royalty was the greater family. The king was, in all cultures, viewed as something between a father and a god. This idolatry of the family is the cornerstone of royalty. People were taught that to obey nobility was the greater form of respecting their father and mother. Culture's objective was to twist the understanding of people so that they believed that extortionists held a rightful place in their lives. The result was that people rarely fought back. Every aspect of the culture of royalty taught people concepts such as nobility, loyalty, duty and honor. Each of these ideas are lies. They are designed to teach people that their worth is less than the worth of the king. Without the trappings of culture, he would simply be a thug taking food and labor at the point of a sword. With it, he is his majesty, the king. All cultures lie designed specifically to keep the powerful in power. History of Freedom As the era of kings was closing, cultures began to disintegrate and freedom grew. This was precipitated by two very specific and very powerful attacks against royalty, the Magna Carta and the Declaration of Independence. Every time cultures are attacked people begin to learn more about their value. When rebellion spread among people of astounding courage, culture lost its grip and people were able to see that there was no king who had claim upon them. They started to see a glimpse of their own worth. The engineers of evil understood that the world had finally learned how to see past the culture of royalty. With the astonishing speed of only a few generations, they engineered the culture of nations to replace it. Under the umbrella of nationality, people are slaves to borders more than at any time in history. The power of my king has been replaced by the culturally superior, our country. Nations have caused greater death and slavery than any degree of royalty ever envisioned. The history of freedom shows that even as nations grow strong, the cultural lessons from royalty have been learned. Freedom progresses around the world as population increases. Cultures are destroyed by freedom routinely, and the lessons of each new tactic of deceit are being learned around the world. The violence of nations increases as the cries of freedom are raised. Hundreds of millions have been murdered and billions enslaved in recent history. All in futile attempts by evil men to stay in power. As the stability of their empires is challenged they rain blood upon the heads of their protectorates. The history of freedom shows that such violence is not the growth of evil, but its death. Violence and the enforcement of law are necessary only when culture's grip fails to effectively control the minds of people. The death of kings, the transitions of nations, the mutations of culture and the violence of governments are evidence of the end of evil. Authorities of all kinds are struggling for breath in a world that is learning how to drown them forever. In the world you and I occupy, the war is already won. We have only to watch evil die. Nations Nations are a generic umbrella of culture that prove extremely effective for authorities. Nations use commonality in race, language and heritage to persuade ownership of people. Their only shared agent is the border. As the cultures of royalty disintegrated, nations were created to replace them. Authorities sought the same stability of extortion that kingdoms provided, but needed to escape the understanding that people had learned about the tyranny of royalty. They created a new enemy, called them, and a new culture called we. Nations drew lines across the globe and eventually swallowed up every inch of inhabitable land known to man. All those who live within these lines become the property of the state. They are taught that they own their governments by means of democracy, communism, theocracy and race. They are taught that their nations belong to them. This is the culture of we. The truth is that their nations own them. 
nations are created and borders drawn to create stability for authority, while royalty improved stability by convincing people that they owed allegiance to authority, nations took a bigger step and taught people that they were the authority. National cultures deceive the minds of people to more effectively extort money and control. As soon as you lend credibility to a predatory institution, they will make prey of you, disguised as sheep, they will have you believe that they are defending you from anarchy, or any other kind of enemy they can devise. Their laws do not speak of these enemies. They speak of you, how much money you owe, and what you will do for them. Government is an agent of force. As soon as power is yielded to authority, as soon as you give it license to take life and liberty, it becomes an agent of evil. Evil men who seek authority over you will not fight government. All evil that wants is power over you. Evil naturally seeks its place in government. There have been many forms of nations created, all with varying degrees of effectiveness in their control. Without exception, the strongest governments are those whose culture most effectively convinces people that the people are the government. All others soon fall. This is why democracies are the strongest form of nation possible. They are introduced last. Communism and Socialism Socialism, communism and welfare states all have different applications in history and idea. Yet they are all exactly the same. They all teach people that they are unable to effectively produce enough to support their own lives. They are given the enemies of greed and destitution as the reasons why authority is needed in their lives. Communism is the second most effective form of evil that has ever existed, and it is the most destructive ever achieved. Communism taught that people require equality of materials rather than the freedom to create. Communism used the lie that people would be part owners of the government in order to garner their support for slave labor and soldiering. Anybody reading the implementation of communism or its similar constructs should readily see evil. There is nothing wrong with a community helping each other. There is no sin in sacrifice or giving. But as with all culture, these ideas were lies. There is no sacrifice in communism and socialism, and there is no giving. They are always implemented by force. Socialism and welfare teach that people do not own their own labors. They distract people with cultural ideals of duty and brotherhood. Their true nature is the nature of force. Nothing in welfare and socialism is done by choice. Everything is implemented under threat of violence. As with all culture, welfare and socialism are evil. Tyranny has destroyed countless more lives than poverty could even dream. In times of poverty only one thing stands in the way of people, government. Governments use violence to restrict freedom and therefore people's ability to better their lives. Under the pretense of ending poverty, authorities have used compulsion and violence to create more death and destruction than any storm, any famine, and any drought. It is the element of force that belies the tyranny of all socialistic ideals. Without force, there is no evil in them. With force, they are the same as any other government. They bring misery to humanity. Dictators a dictator bears similarity to the kings of royalty while maintaining a culture of nationalism. There is the common belief in history that dictators and kings are noble. Any time a national culture is strong, leaders are thought of as pure and righteous. Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler are just two examples. After their deaths, their people were shocked to learn that the atrocities of their nations were created by them. History records endless testimonies of people who believed that the terror in their lives was happening without these leaders' knowledge. National socialists actually viewed the terror they brought to Europe as a defensive war. Wherever you see culture supporting an authority, or trying to implement an authority, you will find the destruction of freedom. In every culture people are deceived into believing that authority is good. Even when they can see the tyranny of authority in history, they fail to see it in their own culture. The greatest mistakes of history have been those of inaction. Killing a man because he advocates the destruction of liberty sounds extreme to people of all cultures. Culture indoctrinates people with this thinking. Yet the logic of killing Adolf Hitler, Mao Zedong and Vladimir Lenin instead of allowing them to destroy the liberty and lives of billions is unavoidable. The idea of killing a dictator in cold blood before they murder millions is offensive because the cultures who protect these leaders design themselves that way. And so evil prospers. Peace is found when people stand for morality and reject culture. 
Defend freedom at all costs and at all times and peace will rule the world instead of tyrants. Morality enforced. Cultures love teaching people that morality is properly enforced. It is the ultimate deceit, a powerful lie. Cultures teach that morality and prudence are one and the same. Culture can easily claim authority over people when they believe that doing something foolish is the same as doing something evil. Morality is freedom. Immorality is the destruction of freedom. Morality is good. Immorality is evil. Culture would have you believe that morality is a question of personal vice. It pretends that imprudence is the same thing as immorality. When people believe that enforcing prudence is the same as defending liberty, they can be used to support dramatic increases in the power of authority over a people. The inquisitions of medieval times used the ideas of enforcing morality to expand the power of the Roman Church. They created law and enforcement to force church government into people's lives. It was culturally acceptable because they were enforcing morality instead of simple arbitrary control. The American prohibition of alcohol was touted as a way to counter the effects of alcohol's control over people. In order to fight that control, the U.S. government established a massive police force to control the lives of people. Those who would force prudence on people teach that people are not able to learn intelligent behaviors on their own. Culture teaches that people must not be free to make personal mistakes. It teaches that people are not worthy of ruling their own lives. Without freedom, prudence is meaningless. Environmentalism Environmentalism shares the ideals of communism. It teaches that greed is the enemy, and that those in search of money will destroy the earth. The enemy of greed is the same enemy that communism employs. It is the same lie. They both teach that without authority, free people will destroy themselves. They both teach that government is necessary to enforce security. Environmentalism has one new twist on the ancient lies of evil. It teaches that the dirt you stand on is more valuable than you. It teaches that authority is necessary to ensure that you do not destroy it. As with all evil, it really only cares that you obey. What excuse people choose to follow is of no concern to evil. Culture teaches that the only security to be found in life is in government. Only they can secure your water, your air and your food. Yield authority to them. The strength of environmentalism is that it can be used to regulate every aspect of your life. Transportation, food, housing, energy and communication. They all fall under this umbrella of regulation and control. Environmentalism is just one more excuse to implement slavery. Bureaucracy It is extremely important to see that bureaucracy is not just an inconvenience. The slavery of bureaucracy lies in force and compulsion. Those under its power are taught to overlook bureaucracy as just another fact of life. The truth is that bureaucracy does not sustain or improve life, it drains it. The culture of bureaucracy is incredibly strong in many areas of the world. It is able to convince people that they are free while subjecting them to reams of licensing, fees, permissions, and reporting requirements. Failure to obey results in fines, imprisonment or death. This is their freedom. Bureaucracy benefits primarily those who make their money from it. These are government employees and controllers. One of their favored tactics in achieving new regulation is the sacking of laws. An example is safety requirements like helmet and seat belt laws. Such things presume goodness, but evil doesn't care if you are safe, it only cares that you are forced. Bureaucrats make the case for new regulations by leveraging previous regulation. They may extort money for the purpose of paying medical costs for trauma victims. They can then claim the need for helmet and seat belt laws because they are obligated to pay medical costs. A bureaucrat's solution to problems created by law is more law. Their obvious objective is law itself. Terrorism Terrorism has nothing to do with America, and nothing to do with religion. Terrorism follows the pattern of tyranny precisely. Many areas of the world are dramatically affected by increasing technology. As messages and images of freedom reach new corners of the world, people begin to see the tyranny of their own cultures. As culture loses its grip on people, authority increases its violence. Terrorism is authority attempting to teach people that freedom is depravity and corruption. Terrorism is authority attempting to teach people that freedom is anarchy, that freedom is to be feared. Terrorism has been used throughout history to coerce populations to yield their authority and governance to those hungry for power and lacking of conscience. 
terrorism is rarely used against those over whom power is sought. Hitler's terrorism against the Jews is a formidable example of the use of terror to gain power over the German people. Al-Qaeda exemplifies the use of terrorism against American peoples in order to maintain power and influence over Islamic peoples. Terrorism is proof of the pattern of liberty. It is precisely because tyrannical states are afraid of losing the grip they have had over their peoples for so long that terrorism is a rising factor in the world. Evil is afraid. Rights. There is no such thing as a right. All people are inherently free. The idea of right was created by men who sought to free people from some of the burdens of government, but who still believed that governments were supreme over men. The problem with rights is that they offer certain delineated permissions granted to men by government. After these, government can still dispose of you as it pleases. Even in measures of restriction, this still teaches people that they have less value than law. The truth is that you are free, and there is no authority that has any claim upon you, ever. You are, by your nature, already free. This is the value of a human being. Law Enforcement Culture teaches that police are the only ones whose right it is to defend a people. It teaches that if people were able to defend themselves, anarchy would be the result. The penalty for defending yourself instead of relying on police protection is usually extremely severe. The reason is obvious, it shows the ultimate tyranny of law. If you aren't helpless then they have little premise to remain in power over you. The intention of law enforcement is not to defend your liberty, it is to defend the stability of the machines of extortion. Laws do not say no killing, no raping, and no stealing. Instead they are volume upon volume of minutiae controlling every aspect of life and destroying liberty wherever they go. Every government agency is enforcers of these laws. The law is not righteous, neither are the enforcers of it. It is a mistake to blindly respect law enforcement as noble and brave. Laws are designed to control, not to protect. An officer of government may believe what he is doing is right. That is exactly what culture wants him to think. Every single one of the hundreds of millions who have died at the hands of governments died under legal premise. Law is not morality. Laws, rules and regulations by themselves are of little danger to humanity. They presume authority to rule over you, and culture demands that you obey them, but they would eventually be ignored as people test and finally discover freedom. It is the violent enforcement of law that bears the ultimate evil. Enforcement is the core of law, since all laws require enforcement in order to control people. Respect for law enforcement is an invitation to tyranny. Every culture in the history of Earth has taught its people that police are good and noble. Medieval knights excuse their tyranny by calling it chivalry. Terrorist cultures excuse theirs by calling it religion. No matter what culture you observe, you will find a belief that the enforcers of law are good. The important question has nothing to do with the nobility of the people who enforce law. It is a question of the nobility of the law. Presuming the righteousness of the agents who enforce the law is precisely what cultures are designed to do because they excuse the nature of the law. This invitation is exploited heavily by history's dictators, kings and mafias. What better place to hide atrocities large and small than the very group of armed men who hold a monopoly on violence and respect? The penalty for disobeying authority is always death. All who have stood in open rebellion against existing powers throughout history were killed. Today, even in free nations men are killed for rebellion. If they cannot force you to obey with intimidation, they use threat. If threat is not enough, they use kidnapping and imprisonment. If that fails, you will be murdered. Which law you break is irrelevant. Even such a little law as a speeding ticket fail to pull over, resist arrest, try to escape or fight back. It happens regularly. The penalty is death. Price of government the stiffest penalties of law are reserved not for those that you are to be protected from, but for those who fail to pay the price of protection. The entire purpose of evil is to enslave you, to destroy your freedom in order to make you a tool for someone else's use. Just as mafia extortion rackets reserve brutal beatings for those who fail to pay the tax, the world's most effective governments use a system of threats, abuse, intimidation, imprisonment and death to ensure that taxes are paid. This is an aside note. This is the very purpose for why cultures and law are created to sacrifice your labor for the benefit of your masters. 
When law challenges its competition, it labels them criminals and racketeers. The definition of racketeering is the creation of a threat, and then charging for protection against it. Such racketeering is institutionalized slavery. Mafias and governments follow the same pattern. History shows us that the names given to each are a matter of who is the more successful extortionist. Summary Nations lay claim to people based upon where they are born with respect to imaginary geographic lines. The truth is that a nation is simply a group of people with guns who will kill you if you do not obey them. Borders and land masses have nothing to do with your value as a human being. They are created to offer rulers stability as they exercise power over you. We is the word commandeered by culture to legitimize the borders and boundaries of law. You are obligated to obey law under penalty of death because you are part of the we within an imaginary geographic line. This is not a we you have joined by choice. This is not a we you can escape. Your ownership of land, your family and your values are not important to we. In our world, the only escape from the tyranny of we is to substitute one we for another. Assuming we let you, evil would have you believe that you are a subject of borders. This is a lie. After millennia of kings, those who were not royalty but sought power found a way to seize it. Nations allowed evil men to remain in control of culture and law. To have authority. Hitler called his version National Socialism. Vladimir Lenin called his version Communism. Some are called empires, some theocracies and some democracies. All have one thread in common, the supremacy of the state. Under nations, culture teaches that no one is above the law. And because nations are defined geographically, no one can escape the law. Put more concisely, nations teach that you are worth less than the law. The definition of evil is the destruction of freedom. If governments were what they pretend by choice, they would not be government, they would be charitable institutions. Since choice is destroyed, freedom is dead and whomever can control the government prevails. Governments, by definition, hold a monopoly on violence. Those who seek power over you will not fight your government. Why fight it, when what they wanted to begin with was authority over you? You already have the institution evil men seek. It is natural for evil to seek its place in government. History shows us that every nation ever devised can and will be used as a tool on behalf of evil men. Evil seeks power. This is an immutable truth. The more power you vest in a government, the more evil you will find there. Chapter 6 Democracy Slavery impersonates liberty. The absolute pinnacle of cultural success is to convince people that they are free in their slavery. Democracy is an invented theory, not a moral truth. It is a construct of evil. It was created to impersonate freedom while still maintaining the grip of law over people. As in every instance in history, the pattern of tyranny repeats itself by reinventing lies to hide the same slavery. Democracy is about making slaves and masters of slaves. The teachings of the world's great democracies are those of liberty and a voice for every person. They teach us that democracies are the greatest possible form of government. The reason they give is that democracy offers a voice for the common man. Unlike kings, dictators and communists, democracy allows most people to have say in the affairs of their neighbors. The evil of democracy knows no freedom. A free person has none to enslave him. Instead, democracies offer everyone the opportunity to enslave you. Majority Rule Democratic culture teaches the rule of law. It teaches that law created by majority rule is morality. Any law, any demand, any punishment is moral when implemented by the majority. Perversions of democracy such as democratic republics and supermajorities are no different. Any law able to be passed by representative, majority, supermajority or any other group becomes morality. If you can convince 50% of a people to enslave themselves or their neighbors, is it moral? If you can convince 66%, 75%, 99% or everyone, is it morality? The affliction of law is a game to evil. Evil seeks control over people in order to destroy their worth. It does not care who enslaves whom, or why. There is no morality in law. Democratic teaching says that as soon as the legal voting bloc approves a law, it is right and proper to inflict it upon a people. Why should the destruction of your freedom be acceptable just because someone else says so? Does evil become righteous when more people desire it? 
Would evil be righteous if all people desire it? Tyranny by one king is the same as tyranny by a hundred million kings. It is the nature of compulsion in law that is evil. How the law is achieved is meaningless. Hiding tyranny in the constructs of representative government and majority rule is commonplace in our modern world. After so many millennia of royalty and warlords, people have learned to see some of the evil in tyranny. Thousands of years were required to discard the notion of nobility and divine right of rule. Today many in the world have an understanding that there is no birthright to rule over others as a king. But the deviousness of evil has pushed that burden upon individual concepts, instead of upon itself. Evil teaches modern peoples that royalty and dictators were a mistake, but that submission to your neighbors is right. In early U.S. history, the majority allowed the enslaving and systematic dehumanization of Africans. Did the law of democracy moralize slavery? Theories such as majority rule are inherently evil. Evil would have you believe that evil is good, and that freedom is anarchy. From the position of a free individual, it is horrendous to watch members of a democracy not only swallow the rule of law as inflicted in all manner and form upon their lives, but also to witness the self-same victims inflict differing versions of morality upon their neighbors. Some people believe that democracies are a safe and proper form of government since the majority of people are decent. They believe that the majority will set proper rules for the minority. This belief teaches two lies. First, that there is nobility in law. That it is right to force the minority to obey. Second, that the minority, if left to themselves, will destroy the lives of everyone else. The minority are controlled and forced by a system of police and law to conform to the correct manner of behavior defined as crime. None of this has anything to do with defending the liberty of the majority. It is about controlling the minority. It is about conditioning the majority to the taste of evil. The thirst for power over others is the lure of democracy. There is no majority. The modern history of powerful democracies has shown that there is no such thing as the majority or the minority. Factions of ideologies within populations fragment democratic societies into countless splinters. Different approaches, compromises and rules break apart any possibility of a single majority, while still creating endless compulsion via law. Because of this, you are guaranteed, regardless of who you are, to be in some majority circles, and some minority circles. You will taste of both the control over others in dictating law, and in the slavery of having law dictated upon you. Your neighbor, who may otherwise think like you, will be willing to sacrifice your liberty to achieve some of his means. Likewise, in a democracy, you will be tempted to make criminals of your neighbors. As soon as culture teaches people that it is right and proper to destroy liberty under any premise, authority splinters and tyranny grows. Violence and Destruction Democracy creates violence and destruction. Democracy teaches people that it is proper to inflict your will by force upon others. Indeed, it teaches people that they are entitled to take anything from their neighbors by force. Democracies are always welfare states, because everyone is able to create laws legitimizing theft. The strongest democracies have the highest taxation and the most regulation. Government employees are able to influence laws to benefit their own positions and salaries. The more regulation created, the more opportunities for piety in the name of propriety. Many wish to control behavior in the name of religion, environment, economics, decency and safety. Democracy teaches that these things have more value than human beings. Evil always teaches that achieving specific behaviors from people is more important than the people themselves. Evil would have you believe that righteousness is found in propriety, instead of in you. When democratic cultures strengthen, it is obvious to everyone that the legitimacy of law is a farce. Any law is noble as soon as it becomes law. What would be considered the crimes of kidnapping, mugging and murder are now committed for you, in proxy by police. Mature democracies will find certain people who begin dispensing with the excuse of law and simply take what they want when they want it. This is no more evil than law, just more efficient. The height of democracy is the chaos of men stealing from men, destroying each other's liberty at will, and crushing the human spirit simply because they can. The height of democracy is an inability to think, to speak or to act for fear of law. This is not anarchy, this is tyranny. Tyranny is always disguised as culture and law. Perfect Evil
To understand the nature of democracy, it is essential to understand that evil is the destruction of freedom. The stability of control is the engineering design of culture. The more stability that authority can be exerted with, the better. Stability in history is non-existent. Wars have been fought continually, empires have been born and destroyed throughout the millennia. Nearly every excuse for tyranny has been tried, and eventually overcome. Human beings seek liberty in their lives, because liberty is the nature of humanity. Liberty is life. Our continual struggle against evil has been recorded by history. Evil has eventually lost every war it started. This is a testament to the strength and goodness of humanity. It is also a testament of the adaptability and evolution of evil. Every form of tyranny has failed because people eventually recognized it and retrieved their own liberty. Evil has found a solution to its losses in making partners of its slaves. Democracy is the greatest evil that can possibly exist. It is a greater evil than communism, and a greater evil than royalty. All other forms of tyranny are obviously evil because they allowed a few to control the lives of all. Freedom was destroyed for nearly everyone. Democracy, however, teaches that you are free enough to vote, a seemingly better system. Unfortunately, it legitimizes other people voting away your freedoms. This makes it evil. What makes it pure evil, and the greatest form of evil that can possibly exist is that you also vote to take away freedoms. Everyone becomes a slave and everyone becomes a master of slaves. Perfect evil. Chapter 7 Economics Economics is the study of the trade of work. The principles of money are scientific, and as with all truths, simple and easy to understand. Government institutions have created artificial ideas such as employee, corporation and dollar to enable them to control your labor. Their objective is to confuse you and make money complex so that they can more easily take it from you. Work Everything you do to better your life requires work. It may be as simple as planting a seed and tending the soil so that it will grow to be your food. It may be washing the dishes so that you can eat from a clean plate. It may be climbing a hill so that you can slide down. You do everything that you do to benefit yourself and those you love. Trade You may not be good at building some of the things you want. You may not want to plant your own food. Trade allows you to do different kinds of work, but to give that work to others in exchange for work they provide you. If you cannot build an integrated circuit, but can operate on a tumor, then a trade can help two people, a doctor and an engineer. Trades can be between two, three or hundreds of people. But at the end of the day, it is as simple as trading your work for someone else's work. You get to do what you are best at, but get to receive what others are best at. Savings and Debt Savings and debt allow people to perform trades without the restriction of time. When you work today and redeem the traded work later, it is called savings. When you redeem today and perform the traded work later, it is called debt. Both principles enable you to control your labor without being subject to time. Money Money is the record of all savings and debt transactions. All it does is record what you owe, or what is owed to you. It can be carried symbolically as paper or coin, or as a line item on accounting books. After you have performed some of your work in trade, you receive money to record the value of that work. Your trade of work can be between any number of people, and all redeemed at different times. The principle of money greatly enables people and frees them to work and receive the benefits on their own schedules. Economic Control There are people who wish to use your work for their own purposes without providing anything in return. The objective of economic control is to control as much of your labor as possible. Tax There is an extra party to most economic trades that take place on Earth. They offer no benefit to either party, and they do not allow you to choose whether or not to include them in the trade. A tax is when someone takes money that does not belong to them. Taxes are law and not principle, because they destroy freedom and must be enforced. Some of the people who tax are common thieves while others are powerful governments. Extortion The corruption of economics is called extortion. When you labor, but someone else redeems your work without your permission it is tax. To tax someone is to steal from them a portion of their work, or all of it. Under taxation, you work but gain nothing in return. Even when the claim is made that the money will be spent for your benefit, 
You cannot choose what your work will buy. Under taxation, the extortionist is the master and you are the slave. What amount of time they steal from you is irrelevant. A slave for an hour, or a slave for life is still a slave. Failure to pay is penalized by imprisonment or death. Taxation comes in many forms. The simplest is to steal your money without you ever realizing it. We call this theft, and it is practiced by common criminals. The more popular and vastly more profitable form of taxation is to take a portion of your work when you produce it, when you trade it and when you save it. This is the form which is practiced by governments and mafias. There is another form that is incredibly devious and difficult for people to see. The restriction of behaviors to compel you to do something that authority wants is taxation. Using this method, they never have to bother with money. They simply compel you to do their bidding directly. This form of taxation is called by many, many names. Some of them are price controls, regulation, bureaucracy, red tape, paperwork, formalities, oversight, social security, public works and the public good. Effective taxation is a function of time. A common thief will steal as much money from you today as possible. Tomorrow you will be destitute and have nothing left for him to take. Furthermore, you will run far away, or find a method of protecting yourself in the future. Governments are far more advanced. They allow you to keep a portion of your work for yourself, enough so that you will not run away or revolt but instead continue working where they can take from you again tomorrow. Taxation constantly fluctuates as governments test whether or not they can get more from their subjects. If people slow down, or quit working, then taxes are too high. Culture is manipulated to keep up with increasing taxes to teach people the nobility of government and slavery. Because taxation is a function of time, they can pirate from you not just huge percentages of your money today, and not just for the rest of your life, but all possibility of interest on your labors. Government taxation is the single most effective extortion racket that has ever existed. The evil genius comes with the culture most citizens consider it honorable to pay their masters. Earn, trade, save. Taxation is obfuscated in every area of your life. The easiest to see is when they take your money as you earn it. Income tax, regulations and governmental restrictions allow the extortionist to pirate labor before you ever get to put it to your use. You serve them. They leave you the scraps, whatever the percentage of your liberty or labors they allow. Extortionists take a further percentage every time you trade your labor. Called sales tax, use tax, gas tax, or any such sundry names. You have less than you produce because they already took huge percentages from you, and now as you go to redeem your labor for food, shelter, better health or comforts, they take even more. This is not all, because they also restrict your choices in redemption they tell you what is legal to buy, how much and sometimes at what price. Once earned and spent or saved, your money and property are still not safe. Property taxes and annual licensing fees confiscate a further percentage of your work, as a privilege for ownership of your own money. You bought a house, and you bought a car, but in reality you are just renting them from government. Try not paying the taxes and fees if you don't believe that. You will shortly be evicted. All of this is designed to keep you working tomorrow on the upkeep of your masters, lest you retire too early. Your money is not safe in savings either. All governments control their forms of money such as the US dollar, and it is illegal to trade using any other currency. Inflation is engineered by governments to erode your savings over time as they spend your money through government deficits. Inflation also ensures that as your savings are eaten away you will be forced to keep working, wherein they can repeat the cycle of taxation. Remember that the reason you work is to benefit yourself and those you love, yet because they are more powerful than you, many, many people have managed to force you to work for their benefit. This is economic control. This is the purpose of government. Governments are predatory institutions. Economic culture. Make no mistake you are a slave and government is your master. The brilliance of your masters as opposed to conventional slavery is that they allow you to believe that you earn what you work for and that you own what you buy. It keeps you complacent and agreeable. Taxation is a function of time. They will take just as much today as keeps you laboring in their behalf tomorrow. Cultural ideas like public servant, 
public works, public good, public protection and social security illustrate their deviousness. They have actually convinced people that having their money stolen under threat of death is something to be desired. Remember, it is all for your own good. Constructs such as employee, job, corporation and legal tender are rackets engineered by highly skilled extortionists to restrict behaviors and confiscate wealth. An employee is a person who performs work in trade for money. This is no different from a contractor, a non-employee or a garage sale. You perform work in exchange for someone else's work. You create wealth to feed your family and to benefit your life. Employees, however, are constructs of governments to restrict economic behavior. What's the difference between an employee and a person who only performs some work? If you gather together the thousands of pages of laws, you'll get the idea of who benefits from the artificial ideas of employee and corporation. Governments play employees and corporations off each other to divert anger over the loss of freedom from its proper target, the extortionist. Corporations are constructs invented to restrict the collective behaviors of people. If one person can work on a task, it is clear that many can group together to accomplish more complex tasks. Normally this would just be you and me agreeing to do something together for the benefit of someone else, in exchange for money. Corporations are creatures of the state as governments call them created to abstract the average person from the simple truth of people conducting trade. If government acknowledged the mammoth restrictions they put upon you which tell you where you can and cannot trade, what you can and cannot trade, how you can and cannot trade and at what price you can and cannot trade, they would have an instant revolt. Corporations allow them to create a demon to hide their own lusts for power and wealth. Corporations today attract the wrath of people as polluters, greedy conglomerates, and usury employers. Despite the truth that a corporation is just you and I trading work. All of this is designed to hide the most advanced extortion racket in history. Cartels and Monopolies A corporate monopoly is hailed as evil because it destroys consumer choice. Governments tell us that monopolies force you to purchase a given product at a given price. The truth is that there is no force. You have at least two alternate choices. First, don't buy the product at all. Second, start your own group to manufacture the product. Given the supposed evil of a monopoly, what solution do governments offer? Government control. Government is the only true monopoly. You cannot choose whether or not to buy their services. Opting out is called treason and tax evasion, and authority will come to your door with guns. They will imprison or kill you. Government is the only true monopoly, and their monopoly is a monopoly of violence. These are the people that we are taught to trust with authority over our goods and services. Demonizing corporations as monopolistic follows the pattern of tyranny precisely. Fabricate an enemy, and seize control. A cartel is when the forces in an economy band together to preclude anyone else from entering a market. As with the monopoly, this is only possible with government. Only government has the weapons and police to stop you from selling a product or offering a service. There are cartels large and small all around the world. They normally focus on an industry within a country. For example, a government agency that controls the sale of drugs and healthcare operates a cartel. When licensing, government applications and fees become the barrier to entry in a market, government effectively keeps the existing market in place and keeps you out. If you try to operate in freedom, outside of the law, you will be jailed or killed. Many big businesses love cartels because government becomes their partner in keeping competition away. The laws and regulations that people are taught to agree to do not hurt big business. Big businesses are the only ones who can afford the cost of regulation. Some people think they are sticking it to big business when they enact tough laws, but they are actually pawns of culture and they, themselves, are the ones who are hurt. Regulation keeps big business big, and bankrupts everyone else. This is the nature of a government cartel. There are no other cartels. Choice. Taxation is championed by culture as the means of building societal needs, but social needs can never be met by force. A person who does not purchase a thing by choice can never gain benefit by being forced to pay for it. Welfare and the public good cannot be served by extortion. Only the owner of work can rightfully decide where that work is redeemed. All else is thievery. All claims of need and public good that are not met by free will are the lies of culture. 
An important principle to understand is that evil wants power over you. Money is only a representation of work, and as long as evil people can compel you to work on their behalf, they don't need to possess money to control you. This principle is exercised in welfare and socialist states. Money confiscated by politicians is largely not spent directly on themselves. However, they still enjoy the taste of power over you by taking and spending that which they did not earn. It is not money that is evil, but slavery. Frequently governments will strengthen their culture grip over a people by spending extorted money in targeted ways. Just as mafia dons and drug lords are known to spend on social projects for the benefit of the poor, governments use money to fabricate enemies and impersonate righteousness. They spend lavishly with other people's money on public works and welfare. In so doing they pretend to be the saviors of the people while condemning the rich socialism or the Jews Nazis or freedom itself terrorists. The pattern plays out in a thousand ways, and the artificial enemies are always different, but the result is always the same. Governments do not always spend money on themselves, but they always increase their power. Remember that money is only a representation of power, its only value is in its ability to convince others to work on your behalf. Money's value can be wildly fluctuated depending upon how you view it at a given moment. Those in authority over you know very well that money can have vastly more value than the numbers printed on the front when you use it as a weapon against one group to benefit another. They claim to exercise authority with no gain for themselves. This is a great lie of evil, used liberally in democracies. It is a debt paid by slaves to be collected by authority in loyalty and allegiance. For all who wish to feed the poor of the world, there is only one solution, and authority. Freedom solves the world's ills. The reason the earth has widespread poverty is simply because people are not free to pursue prosperity. A free people are a prosperous people. Government debt. Government debt is money spent by governments before they confiscate it. Such debt has little meaning, since the evil is found in the confiscation, and not the timing. However, Given the culture of democracies, people are taught the nobility of nations and the loyalty of being a taxpayer. Governments know that they can spend whatever they want today, and obligate you to pay for it tomorrow. The nature of national cultures is such that even when the threshold of extortion is less than government spending, by the time the debt comes due, cultures convince people that it is their debt. In this fashion, they raise the threshold of extortion. People are less likely to revolt or quit working when they are taught that it is their nation, their debt and their moral obligation to pay. Bureaucracy Bureaucracy is a word used to describe the requirements of complying with government regulations. In order to make sure that you are obeying the countless laws government subject you to, you must also subject yourself to the enforcement of those laws. Innocent and necessary in the eyes of culture, the truth is that bureaucracy is the patent nature of slavery. Evil seeks control over you, to destroy your liberty, to destroy your spirit. The more you must do by force, the less freedom you have, and the stronger evil is. Every culture teaches the nobility of law enforcement. They teach that law enforcement prevents murders and rape. While it is entirely possible that they do on occasion stop violence, the vast majority of modern law enforcement is designed only to destroy liberty and extort wealth. Every visit to a motor vehicle's bureaucracy, every tax form, every time you are pulled over, every ordinance you comply with at home or on the job is law enforcement in action. The culture of law enforcement is one of protection. Their protection exists only to the extent necessary to convince you to submit to everything else they demand of you. The law teaches that you must comply with dreams of bureaucracy and enforcement in order to protect other people from you. You are taught that you must comply with extensive enforcement because you cannot be trusted to live peaceably. While culture teaches that the nature of criminality is murder, rape and theft, almost none of the enforcement of law has anything to do with such things. The reason is obvious, you are not evil, and you do not do such heinous things. There is very little reason to believe that those around you are any less moral than you. And yet, somehow, to support the basic definition of crime, millions are employed as agents of law. They spend all their time making sure you comply with the facets and iotas of every regulation they can devise. 
The amount of extortion necessary to support vast bureaucracies is almost unfathomable. The amount of life held from supposedly free peoples in obeying law is shocking. Yet evil has what it wants, enormous control, dramatically diminished liberty and huge sums of your money. Building codes, environmental regulations, local planning, and on and on, each one justifiable in modern culture, each one has armies to support them. Each one with just one thing in common, their enforcement by law destroys freedom. If any of these goals were noble in their own right, they would not need force to accomplish them. Their true result is to raise costs through increased property tax, impact fees, licensing fees, business fees, employment taxes, etc. Even government programs designed to cultivate seemingly noble goals such as ownership societies are inherently evil. They are designed to stabilize populations. What that means is they get more people to commit to a location, and a cost on long-term financing so that it is harder to escape taxation. If governments actually wanted families to own their own homes, they would simply stop charging them rent every year. Price Controls Governments sometimes implement price controls. They dictate under force of law what price you must sell your work at. They dictate under threat of imprisonment or death how much you will produce your labor for. In government-regulated cartels like healthcare, governments pretend to reduce costs either directly through price mandate, or indirectly by buying services on behalf of citizens. Using either method they insert the tentacles of control under the guise of protecting the poor from greedy corporations and capitalists. By forcing people to work at artificial wages, they destroy the competition of a free market. When freedom is destroyed, only the powerful can survive. Cartels are thusly forged with governments. Powerful businesses watch their weaker competition fall to bankruptcy. Government makes sure it is prohibitively expensive to enter the market with fees and licensing requirements. Businesses then can enjoy government-mandated prices with no competition. Governments can enjoy control of prices, and therefore guaranteed taxes. The intent of price controls are not to keep prices down, but to keep them up. Big business loves government regulations. Regulations ensure that only the well-established and extremely well-financed can compete. People seeking to trade their skills, products or expertise are burdened by the impossible demands of government. Thusly, big business is an extension of the compulsion of government. Anti-business regulations that people are taught to support are actually good for big business. Instead of hindering them, such regulation destroys your liberty. Protectionism Protectionism teaches that those within one nation or border should exclude others from trade under force of law. This takes place as restrictions on buying and selling products and services as well as employing people. Why should the citizens of one nation be less entitled to wages or a job than the next? Protectionism is that simple. Are those outside your border inferior human beings that they should be kept from working by force? What morality exists in the teaching that one group of people is more valuable than another because of where they were born or where they live? Freedom is about the value of people. The disparity between personal profits of peoples in different lands is large. In one area a family may make hundreds of times less than those in another area. If all people have the same value, why is force employed to stop the poor from earning money at any job they are willing to perform? If the poor want to sell something to a powerful nation, and the people of that nation want to purchase it because it is sold at a lower cost, why should a government wish to hamper what benefits both peoples? Governments use force to stop items from being sold within their borders at lower costs than what those in their own nation will produce. We are taught that their reason for destroying the liberty of people is that they are protecting the industries of their land. It is not hard to see the truth in evil when governments extract large percentages of money from trades. The higher the cost of the product, the higher the extracted tax. Protection, as always, is slavery. Education Governments control education for the purpose of culturing employees. The objective of state education is the stabilization of the tax base. Schooling, education and knowledge are not the same thing. One is not a natural result of the other. People grow in knowledge when they learn truths. Teaching and schooling are meaningless when students do not seek wisdom. They are likewise meaningless when that which is being taught is not wisdom. In order to learn, people must thirst for knowledge. Force and compulsion cannot accomplish this. 
Law does not pretend to teach people their worth or abilities of achievement. Law desires only that you learn obedience. Not only does law provide a way for students to learn the merits of social and economic obedience to authority, it enforces a near-perfect monopolization against all other teachers. Private schools and parents themselves are nearly shut out from teaching children the one lesson they need, an understanding of their own value and potential. When people understand that their minds are truly capable of anything, that they are able to learn and grow according to their dreams, they tend to make poor citizens. They question culture and oppressive authority. They reject taxation. They are stronger, more peaceful, more prosperous and more independent. All of this is wonderful for humanity, and destroys evil. Revealing Truth To see the truth in an idea, it is a good idea to flip it upside down. Socialism teaches that people deserve to receive the benefits of working without actually working. Flipped upside down, socialism teaches that those who work must work not only for themselves but for everyone else as well. As with all authority, there is no choice, no opting out. Socialism reveals forced labor. Price controls teach that people deserve to receive products and services at a proper price. Flipped upside down, price controls teach that you must work to create products at the price government says you must work for. Price controls reveal forced labor. Welfare teaches that people deserve to receive the basic necessities of life without needing to work for them. Flipped upside down, welfare teaches that those unwilling to labor for their own benefit can extract it from you. Welfare reveals forced labor. Bureaucracy teaches that people should be able to expect others to behave according to strict rules to benefit everyone. Flipped upside down, bureaucracy teaches that to keep bureaucratic employees in the money, everyone must jump through hoops and pay fees and fines. Bureaucracy reveals forced labor. Taxation teaches that people deserve to receive roads, protection, schools, and all other manner of services even if they cannot afford them. Flipped upside down, taxation teaches that people have the right to force their neighbors to pay for services without the hassle of asking for permission. Taxation reveals forced labor. All economic control is slavery. Chapter 8. The Pattern of Liberty The pattern of tyranny has repeated itself throughout history. It cycles in every instance of evil, large and small. The pattern of liberty, however, is a singular flow that has been progressing slowly since the beginning of time. Evil has been on earth as long as man. The tactics of evil have changed infrequently, and only do so when forced by the progress of liberty. Every time liberty has progressed, one of the ideas or concepts of evil has died. When cultural control over people is broken, the pattern of liberty takes another step forward and culture has been forced to adapt to maintain control over people. By using threats of death, torture, mutilation and imprisonment, every kingdom on earth has prospered. War created the empires of history, and culture preserved them. All who would not submit to the rule of law were killed. Such ignorance of the power of culture is a thing of the past. Modern technology, brought by increasing degrees of freedom, is allowing the people of the world to see culture for what it is. The pattern of liberty shows how freedom has progressed through history. While cultures around the world teach that evil's control is strengthening, the pattern of liberty shows clearly that evil is weakening. The pattern of liberty predicts the ultimate failure of culture, and the ultimate end of evil. Progress through history The pattern of liberty tracks the destruction of ideas and empires through history. It also tracks the progress of principles and technology. Gunpowder one of the defining technologies that dramatically altered the scope of culture was gunpowder. Prior to its availability, only those who could amass strong armies could effectively defend their land and families. This meant that people were heavily at the mercy of governments and kings. Once gunpowder became available, even small bands of families could challenge the mighty castles of empires. Gunpowder reshaped the kingdoms of earth by empowering people to challenge the violent control employed by the lords of war. Printing Press The printing press reshaped the nature of culture like nothing the world had ever seen. Before its invention, almost nobody knew how to read. It was simply too expensive to own a book. Once the cost of printing dropped, literacy skyrocketed. Information was standardized on the scale unknown in all of history. It became much more difficult for cultures to center their power on the ignorance of people. 
religion was dominated by those who could control the scriptures. With this power, they were able to influence the political freedoms and even the very lifestyles of people. The Bible was the first book printed, and soon spread far and wide. Though the Roman Church had men killed for translating the Bible into native languages such as English, it eventually became available in every language on earth. Theocratic power in the Christian world fragmented and people chose to pursue divergent ideas. The printing press was the foundation of all technology, whereas mathematics and engineering have existed in strength in different areas in history, they never survived. War destroyed the information learned. After the printing press, so many copies of books could be maintained that human knowledge persisted in writing, and spread as fast as the thirst for it demanded. The Great American Experiment The Great American Experiment was a proof for the world. It dared to call the bluff of culture and test what people would do with liberty. Whereas culture had long taught that people were not able or worthy of ruling their own lives, the American Rebellion taught people that they were fully able to live life without a king. They taught by their actions and wittings that men were worth more than governments. This experiment in freedom lived past its first test, as they defeated the armies of King George. The shock that rang through the world was enough to shatter the bonds of the culture of royalty that had enslaved Earth for thousands of years. Internet The Internet and modern computing power have destroyed cultural ignorance once and for all. Like the printing press before it, the Internet has made possible the widespread dissemination and near indestructibility of information. The bonds of culture are founded in the control of speech and control of the mind. When people are free to speak what they think, people learn wisdom at an astonishing pace. For cultures to succeed, they require imposed ignorance and cultivation of planned thought. As soon as people question the rule of law, authority is lost. The cultural shift away from intellectual property is a telltale sign of the end of government rule. In the past, information was regarded as owed by the people who developed it. This meant that anyone who attempted to use that information could be punished by the violence of law. The future holds a shift in thinking that few will be willing to accept until they see it happen. Intellectual property is not a principle, since it must be enforced by restricting the liberties of people. It is an idea and a construct of law. The shift that awaits the world is one of the impossibility of enforcement. Law will struggle mightily in defense of authority and taxability, but will ultimately lose. This is the power of global communication and information retention. Nearly every law will become impossible to enforce. The principles of computing power give the freedom necessary for people to escape tyranny. Violence replaces culture. When cultures break down and the authorities they protect are threatened, violence grows. Violence is a necessary component of control. Violent enforcement is necessary to ward off sedition. Violence changes the dynamics by making the cost of freedom death. Every time the pattern of liberty has progressed throughout history, violence has increased. The future will be no different. As people learn about freedom and see what is possible in their own lives, evil will clamp down. Authorities will employ greater degrees of violence as they lose their grip on power. This is the death of a culture. This is the meaning of war. As the pattern of liberty reaches its final step, the most oppressed cultures on earth will lose adherence the quickest, and those cultures will produce the most violent crackdowns. One of the evidences of this violence is terrorist attacks. Those in modern times are no different from terrorist attacks in history. Oppressed peoples do not want to be oppressed. When they learn of freedom, they seek more of it for their own lives. Evil cultures always demonize freedom. Because the United States of America has been historically freer than other places, it is attacked by terrorist regimes in an attempt to teach enslaved peoples that freedom is weakness. They teach that freedom is depravity and insecurity. Such attacks have nothing to do with the people being attacked. They are about maintaining the grip of cultural slavery over oppressed peoples. The violence of dying cultures can destroy millions of lives, but it never lasts long. Earth's era of wars is over. The rapid pace of nation creation and destruction is evidence of the accelerating pace of the pattern of liberty. New cultural twists invented by evil men are discovered and crushed. Technology and Population One of the principles of history is that freedom is a function of population. Population growth and dangerous tyranny. All the major tyrants of history have sought to limit growth. 
births expand the human experience and teach people about opportunity, hope and faith. This freedom is not conducive to slavery. The more people that live in a culture, the more dissent you will find. It is nearly impossible to control large numbers of people with primitive cultures. One of the evidences of the completion of the pattern of liberty is the astounding population of Earth. Technology endangers evil on every hand. Its use, implementation and imagination are diametrically opposite evil. Technology is born of freedom. Freedom brings wisdom to people who implement learned principles and practical solutions. This search for wisdom teaches people the value that they have within themselves. It teaches them to stretch the limits of their intelligence and faith. This is more than concerning to the control of authority. It is the death of evil. The use of technology enables the evasion of authority. One powerful example of this is the evasion of taxation. Governments are institutionalized extortion. When technology allows people to remove the control of money from government hands, taxation becomes impossible. Advanced encryption and anonymous peer-to-peer -peer networking technology allow for exactly this. Economic exchanges are freed from the bounds of legal tender and regulation. The future of technology brings the impossibility of tracking money and enforcing taxation. This transition will be marked by violence as governments try to salvage their monstrous rates of extortion. The comforts and prosperity of technology demonstrate to the world what the fruits of freedom are. It is entirely impossible to hide from culturally enslaved peoples the glory that is human life. Principles and products leak through every culture on earth. The kings of old have fallen. Communism is weakened. Theocracy is dying. Democracies are bankrupt. Violence will mark the transitions, but freedom will prevail. The American Dream the American dream was for a land where people would be free from the interference of government. The dream was one of freedom to pursue joy and happiness. Today, culture teaches that the American dream is a specific and tightly defined perspective on the perfect life, and that the reason the United States of America is great is because it has the ability to create that life for you. Culture perverts everything good. The American dream is not an American dream. The great American experiment brought massive liberty to the people of America. More than had been seen at any other time or place on earth. The experiment and the dream are not for Americans. The United States of America is not to be respected as a nation. It is not a favored group. There is no magic, no cultural supremacy in the red, white and blue. The great American experiment is to be respected only because it taught people that they are worth more than the law. The government of the United States of America in modern times closely resembles both a democracy and a welfare state. It is bankrupt and heavily enforced by legions of law. Culture would have you believe that this is its legacy. It is not. The Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the very action of rebellion against a king taught the people of the world that government had no natural right over them. These things taught the whole earth that they owed government and authority nothing. It told people that authority should never tell them what they could say, how they could worship, what they could print and where they could gather. It told people that law enforcement is a dangerous animal, and they ought to be able and willing to defend themselves against it. It taught people that government and authority can be limited. It taught people that they were worth more than the law. This mighty step taken in the pattern of liberty has nothing to do with democracy or government. The power and beauty of this step was the anti-culture created by men of rebellion. They attacked every leg of authority by teaching people about a measure of their own worth. The experiment has proven successful freedom for people does not create anarchy. America is not perfect and it will not be the end of freedom. Mankind's thirst for liberty will not endure the tyrannies of earth for long. They will be taught that they are worthy of ruling their own lives. The pattern of tyranny will be broken. The American dream is not an American dream. It is a human dream. It was a giant stair climbed on the backs of heroes toward the freedom of men. It will not be the last. Competition for Freedom as people are able to look beyond the tyranny of their own lives to divergent cultures on earth, they will see a competition for freedom. The lure of freedom will be evidenced by the technology, prosperity and peace of freer peoples. They will ask why it is noble for them to obey certain laws, but not the rest of the world. They will see that those things which are demanded of them are not natural, that they are tyranny. The pattern of liberty progresses every time the lies of culture are discovered and understood.
Though cultures are designed to maintain tight control of the minds of people so that they cannot see the tyranny over them, witnessing freedom can break the bonds nearly instantly. When the violence of dying cultures runs out and freedom peaks out of every dark place on earth, the people of the world will begin a competition for freedom. When there is freedom to move and shop for jurisdictions, you will find that people move to freer societies, not stricter ones. Moreover, elements of evil will gravitate to more restricted societies because they are easier to exert control over. This is the final chapter for evil. Technology, communications and wisdom free people to evade authority, and they will do so with ever increasing effectiveness. This is the completion of the pattern of liberty. This is where evil ends. Chapter 9 End of Evil Voice is a principle of intelligence. Voice is the highest form of communication between beings of the highest intelligence. The passion and feeling that people are able to put behind their words can change lives and change worlds. The few who achieve a glimpse of the power of voice bring either insane destruction or awesome freedom. Every great and terrible culture brought into the world was brought by the principle of voice. Every rebellion and revolution that destroyed cultures and empires was brought by the power of voice. Men who understood the principle of voice have irrevocably altered our world. The principle of voice is found in every element of human communication. Writing and books are lesser forms of human voice. Every transfer of words contains the power to change lives. When accompanied by the passion of life, voice alone has the power to free worlds. The principle of voice explains why freedom is a function of population. As population increases, it is more difficult for culture to maintain control over the speech of people. The more people communicate with one another, the quicker they learn their own value. Population increase brings increased freedom to the world because of the power of voice. When people are unfettered by the chains of culture, and when they do not believe the lie that they are powerless, they can change everything. To change the world you must have the faith that you have such ability in yourself. You must open your mouth and speak. The principle of voice is the passion to convince, the passion to teach, and the passion to create faith. It will strengthen you, and should you choose to use it, you will change lives. Future the dreams that burn in the hearts of billions have been growing stronger through the millennia. Ages of destruction wrought by tyranny will not go unanswered. The children of this world are owed a liberty from slavery that can only be satisfied by the utter eradication of evil from the earth. Every dream of feeding the hungry, clothing the naked and helping the poor is answered in this cause. Human beings are able to answer every need and desire of our world by using the principles we learn all around us. When the obstacles of evil are removed from the lives of people, technology and prosperity advance on an exponential scale. With only limited degrees of freedom in a small percentage of the world, human beings have cured scores of disease and discovered methods of feeding billions. All the comforts of modern life were made possible by people with the faith to succeed. Ask yourself what miracles may be accomplished when this small percentage becomes perfect freedom and is achieved for every one of the billions of people on earth. This is the infinite value of human beings. You are the key. The progress of liberty on our world is advanced by challenging culture and authority. Technology and the proof of the great American experiment are in our hands. To challenge evil, all that remains is to open your mouth and tell the people of the world that the dream of freedom is real. It is you who will teach the people of earth their value. It is you who will bring to pass the greatest revolution in the history of mankind. To challenge the authority of evil, you need to dismantle its tools of violence and culture. Culture is dismantled as simply as disobedience to the control of speech. When you speak your mind and refuse to take offense when others do the same, cultures cannot survive. There is nothing to fear in freedom. Violence is the tool of first and last resort for evil. Those few who will use it to enslave cannot be left alive. A perfect revolution. The price of freedom is blood. This is an immutable truth. The reason is that evil does not care if you live or die. Evil will stop at nothing to achieve mastery over you. A perfect revolution is a revolution where all of the blood paid for freedom is paid by tyrants. And where none is paid by the innocent. There are only three types of action a person can take that which exercises freedom, that which defends it and that which destroys it. Culture teaches the nobility of destroying freedom by concepts such as the rule of law. At the same time, 
It teaches the immorality of defending freedom in concepts such as police authority. Culture cannot be allowed to continue. As long as men of violence walk the earth, they will devise ways to create cultures under threat of death. The defense of freedom is always righteous, and no tyrant can be spared. There is no proper role for tyranny in the lives of people. As soon as you yield to the forces of compulsion in the name of life, you have lost your life, for it belongs to those who control you. Life is liberty. Without liberty, your life belongs to another. Liberty is to be defended at all costs and at all times. Govern yourself, for this is the nature of an individual. You and you alone control your actions and your mind. This is right, proper and good. You have a responsibility to defend your liberty at all times. If you do not, it will be destroyed. To yield defense of your liberty to another is an absolute invitation to tyranny. Personal sovereignty is the end of evil. When every person on earth will defend themselves and those they love. When evil cannot gain even a foothold because all people are watching for it, and recognize that it seeks to destroy their value. This is the exact opposite of perfect evil, in which every person is a slave and a master of slaves. Perfect liberty is life, and in it there are no slaves and no masters of slaves. Perfect liberty is life. Earth. The cultures of earth teach you to accept, to yield and to obey. The end of evil is found in refusing the slavery of the mind. For the end of evil to be achieved, all people must be taught that they owe obedience to no one. They must be taught that the desires and dreams of their hearts are proper and good. They must be taught that every ounce of joy they seek can be had for themselves and those they love. This is the anti-culture, to free the minds of people. Cultures are established first by the control of speech. Condemnation of speech is rampant in the strongest cultures. The end of evil will bring the defense of speech in every home, and in every communication. Culture teaches that speech brings offense. Instead, you must see that speech brings a view into the mind of a human being. Ignore the interpretations of culture and see the intent and feeling of them who speak to you, and then speak back. The control of speech is crushed by the power of voice. In the end of evil, People cannot tolerate compulsion and force. The mistakes of history are found where people have allowed the establishment of culture. In every case, it was known that this establishment would destroy liberty. In the end of evil, tyranny will not be tolerated. You owe allegiance to no nation and no law. You are a being of infinite worth, and fully capable of escaping the bondage of evil. When you feel compelled not to speak, speak. When you are oppressed by law, circumvent it. When violence threatens you, crush it. Remember the lessons of technology. Technology is the fruit of freedom. Technology enables humanity at the expense of authority. Just one example of this is the extraction of economics from the control of nations. Regulation chokes economic activity by making it prohibitively expensive, cumbersome and complex for newcomers to sell products and services. The answer is technology. Internet activities such as classified service listings will be merged with product auctions on an open and universal platform. We already understand how technology can bring the cost of selling down, and make selling easier for everyone to accomplish. The lessons of evading extortion and control are, likewise, already learned. Global peer-to-peer -peer networking ensures that no authority can switch off a server to dismantle economic activity. This dispersion of economic targets will make it impossible for governments to enforce taxation and control. Making peer-to-peer -peer nodes anonymous using powerful encryption technology will make it extremely difficult for authority to bring excessive violence upon individuals to force examples of obedience. Steganography within established protocols such as HTTP will make disabling specific communications impossible without disabling all communication. Merging public auctions and marketplaces with anonymous, steganographic peer-to-peer -peer networking will forever remove the control of economics from the hands of extortionist authorities. With technologies such as these, people can buy and sell anything without the interference of governments and mafias. Furthermore, governments will not be able to enforce taxation record-keeping, since instead of a smaller number of corporations preferred by government, every one of the billions of people on earth will engage their economics directly. Population and technology crush evil. 
What other devices can be imagined to free people from the tyranny of communism, terrorism, socialism, democracy, violence and culture? With a human mind, there is no limit to imagination and invention. When technology and innovation beat down authoritative control, the liberty released will spawn astronomical advances. One ounce of freedom may bring one ounce of technology. Two ounces may bring ten. One free person may bring one idea of innovation. Two free people may bring a hundred. Total freedom for all people brings nothing less than infinite opportunity. The scale of the speed of human advancement can be seen in thousands of years of history with modest gains in freedom and modest gains in technology. In the most recent few hundred years, technology has exploded. With each degree of freedom achieved, human knowledge builds exponentially. You have infinite value. With freedom, all things are possible. Technology, health, wealth and knowledge are all facets of power. Each of these improves the lives of human beings. The fruits of liberty are everything good and bring peace, prosperity and joy. You live after the era of wars, and the only remaining step in the pattern of liberty is to answer the question held in the minds of people around the world. The lies of millennia have not stopped the unquenchable thirst for freedom that grows within the hearts of every person on earth. They are poised and ready to take the freedom that is rightfully theirs. They need only hear that freedom is possible, that freedom is real. You are the key. To teach the people of Earth the value that they have within themselves you need only speak, and tell them that every good thing is theirs to have. You need only tell them that the glory of liberty is real, and that it belongs to them. This war is already won. Evil has already been crippled. Every human being on Earth is ready to rise and let the chains that held them crumble to dust. This world will be free. If you can see your own value, then stand tall. Ye are called unto liberty. The end of all evil is upon you.